bone-crushing defense. For more than five decades, Prairie View a and and Grambling State have met on the gridiron. Tonight, the legends and the rivalry continues. It's Grambling and Prairie View next. Star State of Texas, they have come from miles around for the annual state fair. And what better setting could there be for a football game? Live from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, it's the annual state fair classic between the Tigers of Grambling State and the Panthers of Prairie View AM. And welcome everybody inside the Cotton Bowl. Charles Ward, Mark Lasseter with the play call. Mark, the Tigers are grambling at one and two on the campaign. An interesting start for them. An unusual position for Prairie View also, Charles, coming in at two and one. Now, we know about Prairie View's 80-game losing streak and grambling, sending 217 players to the NFL. But this evening, none of that matters. It's the competition of the swag. Likely one of these players for Grambling that we'll be seeing on Sunday that make it into the NFL is this guy we're looking at this evening, Kenneth Petway, the linebacker for the Tigers. Ken Petway is one of those players that brings a lot of pressure off the corners for Grambling. He has the unusual combination of speed and strength, so Prairie View will have to account for him. Petway with a big ball game against Bethune Cookman a couple of weekends ago. As we take a look at the offense for the Panthers of Prairie View A&M, they're led by quarterback Michael Hill. And Michael Hill will face that speed of Grambling. He's going to be responsible for making a lot of play calls at the line of scrimmage and improvising if he has to. Of course, Michael Hill with the four touchdown passes on the regular season. Tigers got to keep a big eye on him this evening. That's what we've got on tap coming up. It's the Tigers of Grambling State University and the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. Kickoffs on its way. on Chevron Hardcore Football. Today's game is brought to you by Dodge, the Navy, Russell Athletics, Coca-Cola, and by State Farm. And we are back live in the Cotton Bowl, getting set for the annual State Fair Classic. The Panthers of Prairie View A&M, a &M, and the Tigers of Grambling State University. Tigers of Grambling at one and two on the campaign, have yet to win a conference ball game in the SWAC thus far this season. They both play out of the West as we take a look at the head coach for the Tigers of Grambling, first year head coach, Melvin Spears. Melvin Spears comes after three years in corporate America and now has really transferred what he has learned on that side. He's put together a defensive staff, offensive staff, of a lot of variety on his coaches, and now he's trying to really take on the tradition of Coach Eddie Robinson at Grambling. You talk about Eddie Robinson and Doug Williams as well. For the Panthers of Prairie View A&M, also first-year head coach, Henry Frazier III, right now riding high on that crest of the 2-1 and one mark of the Panthers. Coach Henry Frazier has rebuilt two programs already. He hopes to do it a third time at Prairie View. He comes from Bowie State College. He's 28 and 25 as a head coach. But in his first year, he knows he has his work cut out for him at Prairie View. And taking a look at Michael Hill, the QB for Prairie View A&M. We highlighted him in the pregame show. Hill with a lot of weight on his shoulders because he's primarily the cog for that Panther offense. Michael Hill is going to be the person that has to be the trigger man for Prairie View. They haven't faced a defense like Grambling so far. They had some difficulty against Southern University where they were really blown out. But Michael Hill is hopefully in that off week made some adjustments to that offense and hopefully they'll get it going this afternoon. Hill with that second in the conference in terms of passing efficiency. But have a real big challenge tonight against that Tiger defense. And we highlighted Kenneth Petway, the leader for that Grambling defense. They're going to try to make it awfully tough for Hill tonight. Thing to watch for the Grambling defense, Charles, are the defensive ends. That's where they bring the pressure. And when they come from the outside, they hope to throw off Hill in his rhythm because he hasn't seen that kind of speed. Crowd on hand as we take a look at some of these shots from the Cotton Bowl here in Dallas as players are getting set now to kick it off. The Tigers from Grambling will be kicking it away. And it'll be Prairie View going on offense first. Prairie View will receive. If Prairie View has any thoughts of winning this game, Charles, they've got to run the ball and try to control the clock. They've struggled so far on offense, on the ground, and Grambling knows this. Brian Morgan, the senior from Groves, Texas, will get a start here in the Cotton Bowl. And he drives it deep and back into the end zone, fumbled in the end zone, and 
coming out with it. The Tigers near the 15-yard line. Or the Panthers, that is, from their own 15. Returned by Chris Peters to Junior from Centennial, Colorado. Just underway here at the Cotton Bowl. Take a look at the Dodge starting lineup at quarterback for the Panthers. Rambling. That's Brandon Landers. But it's Prairie View with Michael Hill at QB in the shotgun. On the ground they give it. Left side spinning inside near the 17-yard line. 17-yard line. The rest of your lineup. Anthony Gibson at the tight end. Wide out. Anthony Wright. Greg Chapman. The fullback, Eric Woods, and Tavarius Holiday at the running back. The line up front, Thomas, Deal, Fagan, Roy, and Nkimi. For the Panthers of Prairie View. Second down and seven now for Prairie View. The first possession of the football game. Hill showing shotgun. Getting pressure. Flush him right side. Hill with the scramble up to the 22-yard line. And you talk about the defense of the Tigers of Grambling. Let's take a look at some of them. Kenneth Pathway, Zachary, Kador, and Banks. Those are the guys up front, the defensive ends are the guys to watch. Anthony Carr and Robertson, the linebackers for Grambling. And the G-men in the secondary, it's Thompson, DeGray, Welburn, and Carter. So it brings up a third down now for Prairie View. Third and three. Panthers only averaging 82 yards per game on the ground. We'll see what they do on this third down situation. Hill getting back side of pressure now. Still on his feet. Works it to the side. Got a man out the flats. Catch going to be made by Peters. Peters with a nice move at the corner up to the 35. An impressive catch and run after which by Chris Peters. Even though there was a bit of penetration on the defense, as we get a look at the replay, Prairie View's offensive line that features a lot of underclassmen did an excellent job that time of allowing Hill enough time to escape to the outside and make the delivery for a first down. Now, Prairie View wants to build up some rhythm. They want, don't want that first three and out on this series. They want to get a few plays in, pick up a few first downs. Take a look at Peters on the season, averaging six yards per catch. He's got his first of the evening here in the State Fair Classic. First and ten for Prairie View from their own 35. Shotgun, now on the ground they got. Left side, Woods with the football, got it up near the 37. Stop made up there by Justin Cador, the junior from Opelousas, Louisiana. One of the big matchups this afternoon, Charles will be Ikimi for Prairie View, matchup against Petway for Grambling. His job is to really handle that outside pressure. Second down and seven for Prairie View. Talked to Coach Frazier on yesterday. He said they were going to show a lot of different looks to that Grambling defense. And the second and seven, they show shotgun. With a man in motion. They give it in the line. It was Fontenot on the carry that trip for Prairie View. We talked about Fontenot last night in our meeting with the coaches. Fontenot on the season, only eight rushes, but the he came into camp late. They got him adjusted to the offense and expect him to take a lot of snaps tonight and throughout the remainder of the season for Prairie View. Coach Henry Fraser very high on Fontenot. He felt that with the extra week of practice that Fontenot was getting into a rhythm, but he did have a bit of a concern because after Fontenot, there's a drop-off in the depth of Prairie View at running back. Third down and three after the carry by Fontenot. First possession of the ball game for Prairie View. Frazier indicated on yesterday they needed something good to happen early in this ball game, and right now they've been pretty solid on offense. Snap to Hill, here comes the pressure across the middle, pass padded around and incomplete near midfield. They were coming at the corners with pressure by Dimitri Carr. Take a look at the attempted pass by Hill from his vantage point. You'll see Carr, the linebacker, come in behind the receiver get a shot in actually that's a catchable ball but cars pressure put a little bit of heat in that back prayer view has to go into his first punt so peters the intended receiver as hernandez comes on to punt it away 
Nice kick by Hernandez. Back pedaling near the 10 is Mills. Mills works it at the sideline. Still dancing near 13. And finally corralled by the Prairie Blue special teams. So on change of possession, still no score. Grambling getting set to go on offense. We'll come back and set the offense for them after this break. Different big matches this gallery first. You really will get you a great night's sleep today. Back live at the Cotton Bowl. No score between the Tigers of Grambling State University and Prairie View A&M. As we take a look at the Dodge starting lineup for the Tigers of Grambling, at quarterback, the freshman, Brandon Landers. Landers with the four touchdown passes. And a lot of load on his shoulders with the injury of starting quarterback, Bruce Eugene. On the ground, there goes Brent Draw right side. And the Prairie View defense hangs it up on the inside. Carter with the carry. Take a look at the rest of the lineup for Grambling. Spears at the tight end. Son of the head coach. Wide out is Edwards. Hargrove at the other. Pull back to Mays. And Landry Carter on the carry there for the Tigers of Grambling. It's to start at tailback. Second down. No gain on the play for Grambling. As Landers keeps it on the ground again. It's Carter with the carry. Take a look at the starting lineup up front for the G-Men of Grambling. A big group up there. Jonathan Wilson, Dark Banks, Charles Wilson, Wright, Rogers, and Bennett. NFL size for the Grambling Tigers up front. Not a player under 325 pounds on that Grambling offensive front. Now, Prairie View is doing something interesting on their front. They feel they can get some pressure in on the Grambling quarterback because they gave up seven sacks against Alabama A&M. Third down and eight now for the G-Men. Shotgun is the set for the freshman Landers. No slots either side. We'll take the snap. Looking up the road, got some time, dumps it underneath. Good catch made at the corner out of bounds. Catch was made by Tolbert. As we take a look at that defensive set for the Panthers of Prairie View. At the end is Barnett and Jones. It's Moye, Stewart. Stewart and Bell at the linebacking spot. The rover spot by Moe is very critical for Prairie View. Austin Lane and Kendall in the secondary for Prairie View. As that deep pitch for Prairie View holds the Tigers on that first possession, forcing a punt. One of the things that Prairie View's wanted to work on, Charles, is special teams. They want to get more return yardage. They're averaging 20 yards per punt return so far. Tim Manuel on the kick it away for Grambling. Six yards in the front. Got a high one off. Come down short. Bounces at the 47. Takes a GSU roll. And Fairview will come back on offense with their second possession. Look at the defensive coordinator for the Panthers of Prairie View a and Coach Jones, we had a chance to talk to him last night. He said that that defense of Prairie View has got to do what they do best. Play into their strengths, and that is because they're small, they've got to find the gaps and hope they guess right in terms of where Grambling's going to run the football. And you speak of small victories, Charles, one of the early victories for Prairie View. They want to win the battle of field position early. Now they're starting this drive from the 40-yard line. Not a bad spot to put the ball up. Michael Hill coming up under center. Connor Scrimmage will be the 40. Roll with a straight drop. Got some time across the middle. Finds a man underneath. That's straight at the corner. Nicely done by Moyer. Moyer inside of Tiger territory near the 45-yard line. Correction catch made by Sam Robinson. This off more from Houston. But give credit to DeVaris Holiday who threw the block at about the 45-yard line. They got a ride from the crowd. Holiday's wearing number 32. Peels back to the right of the screen. And right here makes the block. A nice move at the corner by Robinson to get to the additional yards. Take a look at the block. Nice one there on the comeback by the receiver. And that springs Robinson enough for the first down for a Prairie View. Panthers impressive thus far on offense. The man in motion. Quick pitch it right side. Walker with the carry. Walks to the 40 down to the 39 yard line. Earl Walker, the senior from Humble, Texas. Take a look at Walker's production thus far on the season. Averaging 2.7 per carry. Let's take a look at the replay. Speaking of the speed of Grambling, watch the pursuit of number 90, Jason Hatcher. Doesn't get in on the initial stop, but has that pursuit speed and closing speed to get in. Second down and four. Picked up a six on the previous play by Walker. Nine, nine. High snap of Hill Campbell. He's getting pressure on 
Fletcher Mark side. Rage has got a man open near the 28 yard line. Angling back to the inside with the catch was Walker from the running back position. Give credit for the read of Michael Hill stepping inside the pressure from the outside and making the delivery, picking up the first down for Prairie View. The heat comes from the outside as we predicted, but he steps out of the side of the pocket and makes an accurate throw to the sideline. Prairie View's got to be feeling very good about this first down inside, very close to the red zone. Michael Hill, you see him scrambling to the sideline, does a fine job of recognition at the corner. Darrell Walker sitting right there, squaring himself up to receive the pass. Nicely done by Prairie View. First and 10, their deepest penetration of this first quarter, down to the G-Men 22. Quick option left side, Hill's got a middle, a hole up the middle. Dances near the 10-yard line for Prairie View. Now, we haven't talked about it that much, but let's talk about the history of this game. Prairie View has not won this game since 1986. Watch the recognition of Hill as he steps up into the hole left by the pursuit of Grambling. A little quick step into the inside, wide open. Talked to Coach Frazier last night. He said that we were, they were hoping that Grambling, because they're so big and so quick, that they would overrun the place. On that pre previous play, we saw that, and Hill picks up the first down for Prairie View as a result. So it's first and goal to go for Prairie View. Hill with a short drop. Going to the corner of the end zone. One on one. Pass batted around. Incomplete. Intended for Andrews. But Andrews covered well in the corner. Excellent coverage by Grambling's Lewis Carter at cornerback. Tried to go to deep fade route. As far as you can into the corner of the end zone. They got tied up. But let's talk about last year's game for a minute, Charles. The reason why Prairie's got, Prairie's got to be feeling very good, last year's game was 65-7 to in Grambling. An early score here would be incredible for Gram Prairie View's momentum. This is a 56 meeting between these two schools. As you take a look at Hill, second down and goal to go. On the ground, gets it to the off of the line of scrimmage. Just pops off the would-be tackle and works it down near the eight. seemed to come free at the end of that play. Grambling was trying to pick it up and run the other way. As it stands, it will remain Prairie View's ball. It's third and goal to go now for Prairie View. Inside that red zone offensively for Prairie View, they're at 61%. Eight of 13 in terms of scoring once they've gotten inside the red zone. Interesting play called by Henry Frazier. The head man at Prairie View. Still go shotgun. Whistles coming in before they get the playoff. Because the timeout was taken on the field. It's like it was taken by the Come Panthers out. of Prairie View AM. We'll step aside for a timeout as well. And back with the third down play after this. setting earlier today here from the State Fair in Dallas, Texas. Cotton candy on the machine. Can't ask for much more than that, Mark. Didn't think I'd get you off that Tilt-A-Whirl ride on the fairgrounds this afternoon. Oh, I'll tell you what, a couple of spins on that ride, and I'm really ready to plant my feet on the ground. <laughs> so take a look now at back at twilight. We are live inside the Cotton Bowl. Third down and goal to go for Prairie View. Inside that red zone. What they wanted to do was assert some personality early in this game. They've managed to do that. We're midway through the first quarter. Coach Henry Frazier's got to be feeling very good about his offense. In this season, Prairie View at 29% in terms of third down conversions. Big one coming up here. Hill steps in the center. Dimitri Carr staring in from his linebacking spot. The old short drop. Now they're tucking away by the run for the touchdown. Breaks to the corner by a nice open field tackle by the G-Men on defense. It was Greg Fawcett, a sophomore from New Orleans. Fawcett came up, made the hit, wrapped up, and gave the safe side. He's pumped up on the sideline. Watch Fawcett, number 29, pursue and make the tackle. Nice open field tackle by Fawcett. That'll bring up fourth. Now, very view. Try the field goal. 
going to be McCall kicking it. And McCall drives it through. Take a look at the kick by McCall. He drove it right through, and Prairie View gets onto the scoreboard first. They lead it 3 0 over Grambling. We'll step aside for a timeout and come back with a kickoff. Back live at the Cotton Bowl, the Prairie View Panthers have struck first. They lead it 3-0 over the Grambling State Tigers. It's unpredictable. It can never be scripted. It's provided us with some of sports' greatest moments. Tuesday, Fox Sports begins a month-long journey, starting with the Division Series, then brings you exclusive coverage of the Championship Series, and culminates with the World Series and the crowning of a champion. The drama begins Tuesday on Fox. Did you see Ichiro last night? Did I ever. Quick work of it, too, wasn't it? Yeah, quick work, almost like four for five. Charles McCall converted on the 18-yard field goal for Prairie View. They get the lead here early in the Cotton Bowl, just exactly what Coach Frazier talked about. Something good to happen early on, and it has already for Prairie View. Last year, Grambling had 656 yards of total offense. Prairie View is up 3-0. Short kick by McCall. It'll be driven by one of the up-men for Grambling. Working the left side of the big hole up the middle. Benny with the football is Landry. Landry stood on his feet. Landry went near midfield for Grambling. Landry put his hand down at the 45. No one got a hand on him. Spun out, picked up an extra five yards. Gets a rise up out of the Grambling crowd seated on the far sideline. Landry Carter with the return. Got a nice wall of blocking in front of him. Able to pick his way right through the seams. Got a nice block there. Spins out of a lot of coverage. As McCall, the kicker, tried to get an arm on the jersey, but Landry Carter able to work his way out of it, and he's hyped after the run. One of the concerns for Prairie View was on special teams. Now their concern has got to be that big offensive line of grappling. Landers in the pocket. Now fires underneath. He it behind the intended receiver, trying to get it out to Henry Tolbert, the junior. Take a look at the scoring drive by Prairie View. Eight plays, 52 yards. And look how much time they ran off the clock, Mark. Three minutes, 34 seconds. Ball control is a good thing for Prairie View. It's a dangerous thing when you're playing a team that has nothing to lose. Grambling comes into this game trying to regain some of the swagger. They would like nothing better than to have a long scoring drive down 3 nothing midway through the first. Second down and 10 for Grambling. Landers on the ground. Gives it to Carter. Left side, Carter lost his balance, but still on his feet. Whistles behind the play, though. Well, check it out. I think they're going to mark his knee down at about the 47-yard line. He was trying to spin out once again. They're going to stop his forward progress. Andrew Carter, the freshman, will put him down near the 47. Make it third down now. And the freshman, Brandon Landers, will go shotgun. Got some time going up top. Got a man wide open near the 20-yard line. Catch made. Downfield by Tolbert. Tolbert finally tossed out of bounds near the 13. So Grambling answering quickly the field goal by Prairie View. Seemed to be some confusion in the defensive backfield for Prairie View. Vincent Moye in coverage. Two men deep. But you shouldn't have that much time with the ball hanging up that long as you see the play deep down the sideline. Wide open by about 10 yards. Santana Lane, the senior for Prairie View, catching up with that play. Santana Lane is fooled by the pump fake, and he drew himself in. An easy catch downfield for Colbert. And the G-men are knocking at the door. First and 10. Landers, going across the middle, wide open. Colbert, touchdown, Grambling. He went right back to Tolbert this time, streaking across the end of the end zone for the touchdown. And Prairie View tried to bring Moye at the last minute on a blitz play. Didn't get there in time. They paid the price and Grambling in a less than two minute drive answers the Prairie View field goal. Watch Moye. He's number eight. Just doesn't get there quite in time. Wide open in the middle of the end zone for Grambling. Tolbert with the long reception and the touchdown grab. As Morgan comes on to try to point after, movement at the line of scrimmage. Morgan, the all swack kicker for Grambling. Grambling players on the sideline, the offensive lineman trying to get the band to lower its value. They need to hear the, sweat, the snap count 
and some of the bands that are seated approximately at the 20-yard lines can be sometimes confusing to the linemen. at the distance of the goal. So Prairie View lining up offside on the extra point attempt by Morgan. So the Tigers with an impressive drive to lead them. And the kick by Morgan is good, so Grambling leads it 7-3. So 7-3 lead by Grambling as you take a look at the touchdown grab by Tolbert. They lead it 7-3. We'll step aside for a timeout. Back live at the Cotton Bowl. It's Grambling 7 and Prairie View 3. Tigers just struck. To get all the college sports you need, tune into Fox College Sports. To get Fox College Sports, call your cable local cable provider at 1-877-2-GET-FCS or log on to foxcollegesports.com. Landers hooking up with Tolbert and just that easily. It's the final days of the Dodge Model year-end clearance. Announcing zero plus on our best selection of remaining 2004 Dodge vehicles. Get the 04 Dodge you want, like the Hemi powered Dodge. He was 15 out of 31 for 200 day yard, one yards, and two touchdowns. So Morgan with the deep kick, and he killed it by Peters. Coming out near the left corner, working with near the 20, and they lost the football. Fumbled it near the 17. Grambling saying that they have it down near the 12. We'll see if the officials agree. And Powell coming up with the football for Grambling was Marcus Dawson. And it will be Grambling football. So special teams right now rearing its head for the G-men of Grambling. As Peters on the return, and the first man to hit him was Dawson. And it came loose, and Dawson able to get right back on it. Dawson, the one that stripped the football for Grambling, and it comes right back to him. If you're going to beat a team like Grambling, Charles, you can't afford to have the turnovers and those early breaks. What Coach Henry Fraser talked about last night was really playing a solid game against this team and not giving them the opportunities. Unfortunately, their defense now, a very small defense, has to come back. Grambling, deep in their own territory. Three shot for the Landers. Offense, number seven, so far sound. And they get the G men for a delay of game. So that will push him back five. But you were talking about the turnovers for Prairie View. Got seven fumbles and four interceptions coming into the ninth ball game. Four from the conference. Four least penalized team in the SWAC. But there the turnover hurts Prairie View. And it gives Landers and Grammy an excellent opportunity. Landers scrambling left side. Now he'll tuck it away and run. Looking for a block downfield. Tucked up near the 15-yard line. He'll go down near the 14. On the other hand, Coach Melvin Spears of Grambling talked about Landers being one of those players you give a little extra leeway to in terms of discipline. He's been inserted as the leader of this team now. And Landers really has the charge to make the calls. How big of a problem is that going to be for Grambling that they lost their senior quarterback, Bruce Eugene, as they go into that swag? portion of their schedule. It's going to be a tough adjustment, but Landis seems to be adjusting very well as he's gone from week to week. He's been thrown in, and he's really grasped the offense very quickly. And credit to Bruce Eugene. He's taken Landis, the freshman under his wing, to give him some advice, and it's worked out well thus far. On the ground, it's Landry Carter. Carter slammed to the surface. A swarm of Panthers from Prairie View in on the tackle of Landry Carter. One of the things Prairie View can't do is really engaged linemen. They're so small. They have three players that go 230 pounds. Their front line did an excellent job this time of pursuit, getting in, gang tackling. Let's talk about a gang. That's four of them right there from Prairie View on the stop. Third down. Third and ten. Football at the 14-yard line. Shotgun with the snap. Now he'll tuck it away. He's got a lot of real estate in front of him. Landers at five. Bang! Hard at the five-yard line. Nice open field tackle by Vincent Moyer. But Landers runs it down near the five and close to the first down marker. First player close for Prairie View. Looked like Thomas Quarles. Couldn't get 
inside penetration once he overran the play landis had clear sailing and then took the hard hit at the end of the play as you mentioned by Moye. Moye, the senior from houston knocking landers hard landers never been shaken up on the play and he was down momentarily near the five yard line He walks off, but it looks like they're looking at that right shoulder. They have just got the wind knocked out of him. Goes off briskly to the sideline. You can see the Prairie View defensive players, Charles, during that last timeout. They were turning to the supporters on the near sideline, trying to get their crowd into the ball game. You see Coach Spears with his back turned to you. The get, got it. He's got his hand on his shoulder now. Is Brandon Logan. Logan, the freshman quarterback from San Antonio, Texas. He, gonna, he'll be called on for at least a couple of snaps. We'll see if Landers is okay. But right now, it's going to be Logan for Grambling. But before that, the G-men take a timeout. We talked about the depth at quarterback for Grambling. They lost their number one man, Bruce Eugene, as you mentioned. Now they're forced to go three deep at quarterback. Take a look at Moye at the sideline for, Gramb for Prairie View. Moye, not very big, but he piked the big punch on the hit of Landers. And Moye plays an interesting role for Prairie View as the rubber back. They allow him the multiple positions. He has to have the tackling ability of a linebacker and the coverage ability of a defensive back. So they really request a lot from Moye on that defensive alignment. Brandon Logan hadn't taken any snaps for Grambling in terms of game play. He'll be forced to come in now. Fourth down and a yard to go for the Grambling first. They're lining up as though they're going for it on fourth. You talk about that swagger. This is a team that wants to make a statement early. A statement will be made on either side of the football. Logan, full complement of backs behind him. On the ground, they give it right side, angling in. That'll be enough for the Grambling first down. Carried by Michael O'Ree, the senior from Bogalusa. You know, Maybe a bit premature in my assessment the of the first down here. Of the sticks, it could come up, based on this mark, just a hair shy. The Prairie View defense saying that they did stop him. They're going to bring the chains on. This is going to be close. I think they're going to be a little bit shy. O'Ree with the body lunge seemingly had it. I say short by about four inches. That's the call. Four inches. You stretch it. And it looks to be more than four. So the Prairie View defense hunkers down and they hold the G-men. An excellent defensive stand by Prairie View. And these are the baby steps, steps that you need. When you've had a program struggling as it has been over the last few years, people don't realize that Prairie View has been forced to play with only 14 scholarships for most of the last decade. You can't feel the program like that, especially in the swag. So this defensive stand is one of those small steps in the right direction for Prairie View. Prairie View, this is the first year that they've had a full complement of scholarship players. And right now, it seems to have affected the program in a very positive way. That if it gets stopped there on ground, you talk about it being a litmus test for both sides of the football. Right now, Prairie View coming over the best of that. The challenge now for Prairie View, Charles, is if they can run the ball out of the shadow of their own end zone. We talked about their totals coming in, averaging only 68 per game. That's not what you want to have. You want to have your team at least at about 150 yards per game. Michael Hill to the Prairie View sideline. Timeout was taken by Prairie View. We'll step aside as well. Grambling leading it over Prairie View 7-3. We'll come back with the Panthers with the football. Stays on his feet. Both in their first year. As Prairie View takes over the football, first and ten. Hill in the mid zone and sacked. It'll be a safety for Grambling. Grambling had backside pressure, and guess who comes up with the safety for Grambling, Kenneth Petway. That's that pressure from the outside corner. Grambling had an interesting alignment that time, brought Petway up at the last minute. Three players to left to the center. Petway showing the speed from the corner for the safety. Just never picked up at all. Petway found a direct 
pad to Hill and able to get him for the safety. Credit that to the inexperience of the Prairie View offensive line. A bunch of sophomores had a difficult time making the correct read, and Petway gets the two. Petway, the leading tackler for Grambling coming into today's ball game, had nine tackles against the Bill Tuckman two weeks ago, picking up right where he left off. That's an all-swack player for Grambling. The other, the other player on that defensive front for Grambling, Jason Banks, we haven't had a chance to talk about him a lot, but he's the other bookend that really compliments Petway. He had four, had four tackles, had three sacks, and recovered a fumble against Bethune-Cookman. So Grambling picks up two on the safety. They lead it now, nine to three. Expectations from the Grambling camp is that Petway, the senior from Houston, will get a shot at the, at the NFL or at least playing on the professional level somewhere. There's a great tradition of linebackers at Grambling. The coaches felt that Petway wasn't doing an excellent job of continuing that tradition. So the punt's going to be short. It'll be fielded by Landry Carter. A correction. It's Mills on the carry for Grambling. Mills inside of Prairie View territory near the 46-yard line. So after the two-point conversion or the safety, now Grambling has the football right back in Prairie View territory with another scoring opportunity. You get the free kick on the safety. Grambling sets up at the 46-yard line. I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to go deep as the quarterback for Grambling. The original starter is coming back into the ball game. So Landers able to shake it off and come back to handle signal calling for Graham. Start with flush receivers either side. With the snap is Landers. In the pocket's got plenty of time. Now he'll tuck it away in the run. Looking for some block. Landers. Turns it back and slides down near the 43. So that'll be a pickup of two for Grambling. Credit that to the coverage of Prairie View deep downfield. Did a better job adjusting to the coverage. Grambling only running two receivers deep in that zone. Prairie View had three players covered. So second down now at eight. Landers with the snap. Fires out the flat. Pass goes incomplete. Intended for Hudlin. But Hudlin heard a lot of noise coming his way, and he dropped it. One of the things Coach Henry Fraser of Prairie View talked about last night was getting his team to play full out four quarters. Watch the hit at the end of that pass attempt for Grambling. Aaron Bell, the junior from Texarkana, Arkansas. Bell trying to ring the bell of the receiver, and he forced the incompletion. Let's mark this, Charles, as the first big play call for the Prairie View defense. Let's do so. Landers with the snap. Across the middle, he flies. Pass going to be it. complete near the 36-yard line, close to the first down marker. It was Tolbert digging it out of there on the reception for Gramley. The spot is going to be right at the yard marker once again for Grambling. And based on the chain gang, I think he's struck by about an inch this time, Charles. Okay, you're one for one thus far. They're going to bring the chains out with looks and take a look at this. Second key measurement for the Prairie View defense. stretch it and we'll take a look at it. Want to get all those kicks out of the chain. As they unwind it. Sure, right on again. top of it again. You go two for two. Coach Frazier looking on for Prairie View. They'll have to defend this third down play for Grambling. If Grambling would try a fourth down and less than a yard close to the red zone, you know they're going to go for it here. Fourth and inches in this situation really favors the G-men of Grambling with that big front. We'll see if they can push up enough room to get the first down. Watch right guard for Grambling. That's where they want to go. Grambling showing a pass defense on a running play. They're going to sneak it left side, and Landers has enough for the first down. Interesting selection of defensive alignment by 
Prairie View as it really looked like they were in more of a pass coverage than a run from it. Look at the gap between right guard, left guard. Yeah, you look at the top wide of the screen open. and below, you see gaps wide enough to fall in there. Sure. So Landers does him a favor by just running for the first instead of trying to go forward for the touchdown. Soft coverage up top also, Charles. Whistle is at the line of scrimmage and a flag coming in. Prairie View, we have to take a guess here, Mark, that they were a little bit off balance on the on the first down attempt on the previous play. They just didn't play that well. So Number three. If Briante Jones of Prairie View comes out in the next defensive alignment playing as far as he's off the line of scrimmage, about 10 yards, Grambling has a free play where they can pick up five yards on a quick out. Assessment against Grambling. Let's take a look at the total yards. It's fairly well matched out as it relates to that. Grambling 90 yards, Prairie View 75. Out in the flats, slipping on the intended reception was Clyde Edwards. Brandon Landers also seeming to have better success going to a two-step drop, three-step drop, as opposed to really taking that longer drop. Prairie View is getting decent pressure up the middle. They really haven't been forcing him to make his throws out of rhythm, but they've been going to a quicker setup and deliver for Landers. Edwards, one of the leading receivers for Grambling early on in this season. There he slipped down on the surface. That'll make it second and 15 for Grambling. From the 40-yard line of Prairie View. Landers in the pocket. He's got plenty of time. Now that man shooting the puck the middle. Same guy as Edwards. Edwards rucks his way down near the 20-yard line. On the crossing route, Landers found it perfectly in stride. You can see him in the pocket. Pat the ball once, twice, three times, allowing his wide receiver to clear and pick up the first down. See him in the pocket. Pat, pat, and deliver. Edwards with the grab. And nice run after catch. Edwards averaging 21 yards per catch. That was good for second in the swag coming into today's ball game. Another big catch there makes it first and 10 for Grambling. Down at the 21 yard line of Prairie View. Landers with the snap across the middle again. Squaring up near the nine yard line. This time the catch made by Tolbert. Van Salier for Prairie View was coming right up the middle. He's number 55, got his hands up, thought he might have tipped the ball at the line just a bit. As you get a look at it, right coming into your living room, Salier did an excellent job. Coaches always teach, get up, get your hands up as you're getting into penetration. Interesting look at the end of that replay there. Tolbert looked like he had some problems handling that football. Don't know if he put it on the on the grass or not. Wasn't caught for it. It'll be first for Grambling. On the ground, Landers. Left side. Works it back to the inside. He'll walk in for the touchdown for Grambling. They got him on their heels with the pass. That enables Landers to run it in left side for the Grambling score. extends their lead. Landers looking good, passing the football and running it. Caps the drive with the touchdown run. And what they were able to do was extend the lead by extending the field, stretching the field by spreading the offense. Prairie View really having difficulty with coverage. Morgan with the point after, and he converts. Watch the ball fake by Landers. Everyone goes for it, actually gets tackled as he breaks back to the left, clear sailing into the end zone. Landers, a nice ball fake. And just only one man to beat in the open field, and he does that. Grambling extends the lead. Once again, play fake is really what made that play work for Grambling. So the G-men now lead it 16-3 over Prairie View. And the freshman quarterback excited about that result. And you talk about how the little things compound themselves. Prairie View gives up the safety, forced the free kick, give up excellent field position, and Grambling takes it in for the score. So what was once a very gaudy three-point lead by Prairie View, Grambling's answered with 16 straight points. We talked to Coach Frazier on yesterday, and he said in the ballgame against Southern prior to this one, it was about three plays that really made the difference in that contest for Prairie View. And it could seemingly be shaping up that way in this ballgame with at least one 
at this point has made the difference in terms of scoring. On the return now. There's Carter. Carter working at right side. A flag, a Peters that is, with the football. Flag coming in. He returns it up near the 17-yard line. You may get a hold against Prairie View on the return, but you talk about a program that's trying to turn the corner and correct the inability to win in the past. It's the small things that they have to correct. It's really not the big plays. Legal block. And you have to distance to the goal from the spot of the foul. First now. So once again, you get a little illegal block in the back, right to the left of your screen. And Prairie View once again will be starting on offense inside their own red zone. Marquise Johnson, the freshman from Humble, Texas, caught with the illegal block thrown downfield. And this ass assessment will hurt Prairie View as well, starting deeper in their own territory. Expect Grambling to start taking some chances on defense. So Hill will show shotgun. With the snap on round. Walker met at the line of scrimmage, pushed out of that hole by the Dimitri car for Grambling. Carr with the hit on, and that'll bring us to the end of this first quarter from the Cotton Bowl. At the end of one, Grambling leading at 16-3 over the Panthers of Prairie View ever a and m We'll step aside for a timeout. We'll get you started with the second. Football Saturday on FSN. Earlier today, or right now, we took a look at the Ferris wheel here, a staple at the State Fair here in Dallas. The dizzying rides throughout the night. Nice way to see that popcorn again. A lot of lights outside of the State Fair. Did you realize in 1894, Thomas Edison gave an exhibition here? A fun State Fair fact. <laughs> As we come back to live football action. Very few with a man out in the flats. Catch going to be made by Bertram Jackson. And Jackson got it up near the 12, perhaps the 13-yard line. The philosophy for Prairie View on this next offensive series, Charles, is to go back where they started. Try to pick up a few first downs, get some offensive rhythm going early in this second quarter so he can answer Grambling's unanswered 16 points. Take a look at Michael Hill peering at the sideline, waiting on the play to come in. Talk to Coach Frazier. He said what they do is they call two plays in the huddle, and then Hill, the senior quarterback, when he comes to the line of scrimmage, he has the option of deciding which play they're going to run. Third down. And four on the Prairie. Hill fakes it in the line. Trying to set a screen right side. Pass batted away. Almost picked off by Dimitri Carr. Too much traffic as Grambling had penetration on the wall trying to set up to the left on the screenplay. And what Prairie View didn't want to have happen was the three and out. But they were trying to set a screen left side. But Dimitri Carr able to get his hand up there and bat it down. Turn and showed the athleticism talked about making the tip as three players were actually set up, ready to go for Prairie View, but when you have that kind of penetration disrupting things, you can't get the play off, Prairie View now has to punt. Eric Hernandez, all swack punter for Prairie View, in the end zone. And get the kick away, nice kick by Hernandez. Back pedaling is Landy Carter near the 35. Carter working his right side now, looking for a block. Now fights his way back to the inside, up near the 37. Tackle made on special teams by Gibb Dungey for Prairie View. That way at the sideline. Turning in a solid performance thus far. Last two drives, Grambling had his field position get started. This is what their offense loves. A lot of variety. They can call from this spot on the field. 
Landers is settling in at quarterback for Grambling. Curious to take a look at his numbers at halftime, starting to turn on a pretty solid first half of football. And showing four wide receivers. Shotgun is a set. He'll take the snap. Takes it in the line. Looking up field. Got a man separated near the five-yard line. Overshoots him down near the three. Intended downfield for Bakari Geist, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana. Geist got behind his man, turned and looked back, and seemed to misjudge the ball just a bit because you didn't see him extend his arms to make a play on the long pass. Geist able to beat the coverage on the route. Coaches Landers. like to talk to players about running through the ball. Watch Geist turn and just doesn't get there. Geist did everything but reach out and grab it right at the end. It's almost as though he was saying, see, I told you I could get there, right? So the pass goes incomplete. Second down and 10 for Grambling now. Landers looking, fires. Landers to pass. Trying the out route, the pass goes incomplete. Intended out in the flats for Hartland. Intended for Hartland. And that'll make it third down. Third down, 10. Third and 10, and you are at the State Fair Classic. It's the Tigers of Grambling State University and the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. Charles Ward, Mark Alaska with the play call. 16-3, Tigers leading it. Now Grambling with the football. Facing that third down. Gone up top the last two plays. Receivers have been open both times. Snap to Landers. Here comes the pressure. They flush him left side. Landers pumps. And they force him out of bounds. Pick up about three on the play. Although Prairie View hasn't gotten any sacks on Landers, they've done an excellent job, Charles, of containing him once he's broken the play, got, the, got to the outside that time, just simply ran him out of bounds. Grambling now will have to punch. Grambling cheerleading squad. Nice crowd on hand here at the Cotton Bowl, as they always are every year for this annual event. Grambling to punt. Manuel set to do that. Trying to kick it away from the return. Hits at the 20. Takes a prairie view roll up near the 27-yard line. That's where they'll take it on offense. Speaking of the crowd, the Cotton Bowl seats actually 68,252. And by the looks of things, we've got about 60,000 tonight. Grambling leading Prairie View 16 to 3. We'll step aside for a timeout. Back with more after this. Back live at the Cotton Bowl. Grambling leading Prairie View 16 to 3. The Sports List is a new show that counts down the 10 best and worst of everything and anything in sports. Monday, find out what were the 10 best plays in NFL history. The Sports Show with host Summer Sanders, Monday at 5 p.m., only on FSN. Immaculate reception, gotta be one of them. Gotta be number three. Back to live action here at the Cotton Bowl. Movement at the line of scrimmage. Hill lost the football, flags at the line. Grambling saying that they have the football that was fumbled, but we'll check out the flag first. Had some movement there. Grambling could have been inside the zone. Looks like Prairie View will maintain possession. That would have been a disastrous turnover. That close to their own end zone. Just kick off. Offsides, defense, number 99, five yard penalty, still for sound. Jimmy Zachary, take a look at Zachary jumping inside of that neutral zone before the snap. Actually, have two players moving there. They get Zachary for the encroachment. It'll be five yards against Grambling. First and five for Prairie View now from their own 30. This is a bit of a gimme call for Prairie View. First and five, you can pretty much do anything from this spot. So Hill going under center this trip. Gives it straight ahead. Look at the ball for Prairie View. And working his way near midfield. Nice run upfield by Arnell Fontenot. We talked about Fontenot coming in, getting some more snaps. Fontenot with a nice run for Prairie View. Fontenot with the explosion on the handoff. Gets up to full speed. Takes the hit. Spins out. Excellent run for the first down for Prairie View. Exactly what they wanted. 
on this series. Coach Frazier very high on Fontenot. You can see why on that replay, Fontenot with a good balance after the initial hit, able to carry it forward near midfield, and mark him down at 47. You talk about players able to get up the full speed in two or three steps. Fontenot got the full speed in about one and a half. Really shot out of the, the middle of the line of scrimmage. Have an injured Panther down. There are sororities and fraternities near the initial line of scrimmage. It's Anthony Gibson, the tight end from Lufkin, Texas. Gibson, the junior, came into the night's ball game with three receptions for a total of 22 yards, one touchdown grab. Henry Frazier felt very good about the overall depth of this Prairie View team, but he wasn't so certain about the depth on that offensive front. Only had about eight offensive linemen that he felt that he could trust in the ball game. So an injury to his front would be not a good thing at this point. Gibson at 6'2", 240. One of the bigger players for Prairie View. Looks to be his right leg they're looking at. Series between the Panthers and the Tigers. This is their 56th 50, meeting today. Grambling leads the series 41 wins, 13 losses. They've had one tie. It's been a tough series for Prairie View over the last 40 years. But what people forget is that Prairie View actually has some very dominant teams in the mid 50s. But that's a long time ago. Prairie View was actually Southwest Athletic Conference champion three years running. But they really struggled last 10 years trying to get some consistency with coaches they've had a lot of turnover and getting co consistency from their roster with the loss of scholarships yeah you're talking about the last 40 years in fact over the last 40 years prairie view has only beaten grambling four times and tied them once they beat them by 1964 1972 1976 and 1986 and they tied back in 1966 that was a 10 10 tie ball game so it's been far and in between for Prairie View. A lot of folks thought that the start, that two and one start for Prairie View, this offered one of the best opportunities to get a win against Graham. First and 10 after the run by Fontenot. Shotgun for Hill on the ground. He gets it to the inside of Grambling territory. Down near the 45-yard line. Fontenot yeah, slicing inside that defense. He got about five on the carry. Did an excellent job turning his shoulder pads north-south and with his body lead, picked up about four additional yards. He's second and about four for Perry Review. Look at the rushing yards as Hill comes across with the pass. Catch made near the 40-yard line. That'll be enough for the Prairie View first down. Grab made by Darrell Walker. Excellent catch working in front of linebacker David Robertson and another first down for Prairie View. So once again, they're starting to get a little bit more rhythm on offense. Landers at the sideline for Grambling. He'll have to wait his turn right now. It's Michael Hill in Prairie View. First and 10 from the 40 of Grambling. Hill in the shotgun. And snap. Quick option pitch left side. Gives it to Fontenot. He's got to move another corner. Fontenot turns the corner. They finally chase him out of bounds near the 25-yard line. With the quick option play. And Fontenot with the carry. Got a lot of good help up front from the lineman with the blocking. Also excellent blocking downfield by the wide receivers for Prairie View. Watch number nine, Sam Robertson downfield, throwing a block, and that's what you love to have on those plays, to have those receivers throwing blocks. Prairie View, another huge first down. Walker with the carry for Prairie View. Then you take a look at what he's done on the season. But that play was a perfect example of what Coach Frazier was talking about, taking advantage of the over-aggressiveness of that Grambling defense. First and 10 after the run by Walker. Play fake in the line. He's going to dump it out. Lassie found the man out there. Gives it over to Thomas, but Thomas grabbed at the initial line of scrimmage. Hill did an excellent job of evading the first pursuit of Grambling. Steps up. Gets his arm free and makes the connection. But that could have been a lot larger loss for Prairie View. Turned into positive yards. Watch the leap 
and the connection. It was Justin Booker on the catch for Prairie View. And Booker with the grab picks up a yard, so it's second down and nine. Clock running here in the Cotton Bowl. We're in the second quarter. Prairie View facing a second and eight. Hill with the snap. Comes to pressure, rolls, breaks containment. Fires to the corner of the end zone. Over the head and incomplete. Intended down in the corner for Bertram Jackson. Jackson got kind of turned around on the route there. And Hill threw it over the top. Lewis Carter actually had coverage for Grambling in the corner of the end zone. Didn't turn, but got his hands up and kind of deflected the attention away from the wide receiver. So that'll make it third down now for Prairie View. Excellent play call. I wouldn't expect Prairie View to go conservative at this spot. Might try that fade route once again. Could very well be in two down territory here. We'll check and see after this play. Hill with the snap. Got some time. Going across the middle, threw it at the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Nearest receiver to the football was Sam Robinson. I don't know if Hill got confused on the route or not, but he threw it to the back of the end zone. He also saw big Jimmy Zachary of Grambling, 6'2", 300 pounds, coming right up the middle, barreling into his face. Forced him to throw that ball a little bit earlier than he wanted to. Fourth down now for Prairie View. Get a look at the Tiger Court. Fourth down for the Panthers. Fourth and eight. Hill rolling short side of the field. Still rolling toward the sideline and racked up out of bounds near the 32-yard line. So on the fourth down play, Hill took a hard shot out of bounds. Hit made by David Robertson, the senior. Hill trying to roll to his right, grappling with excellent coverage downfield by the time Hill was looking. Penetration was there. He had to take the sack. So Grambling takes it over on downs. Ten minutes, 12 seconds remains in this first half. Tigers leading at 16 to 3. Landers now gets his chance back on offense. Showing that shotgun. Grambling offense that's averaging 233 yards per game in the air, so no anticipation of them doing anything less than throwing. Shotgun for Landers. He got a sideline warning before he able to snap that football, as you see Landry Carter working it upfield right side. Someone grabbed him near that face mask. No flag coming in on that. Carter runs it up near the 39. Carter's only 5'7", 183 pounds, but again, showed that burst. Almost enough for the first down. Comes up about three yards shy, but Grambling really has a lot of variety to go to right now in a second and short. The line of scrimmage, the 39. Shotgun for Landers. Splits and slots either side. Play fake in the line, going up top, looking for some separation. Got a man wide open there. It's Hardiman. Hardiman streaking. Touchdown, Grambling. They had two receivers in the route left side. Hardiman broke to the inside. Landers found him in stride. They got exactly what they wanted, Grambling, that is, because they had a linebacker in coverage, Clark Stewart, for Prairie View, working against a speedier receiver, and that's a mismatch any day of the week. Deep. Landers holding tight in the pocket. Hardiman with the separation. Coverage by Bell, but Bell not able to catch up with Hardiman. Touchdown grab. And the point after is good by Brian Morgan. So Grambling now leads it 22 to 3. With the long touchdown grab by Hardiman. Right down, my boy. So with the grab, Grambling leads it now 23 to 3 over Prairie View. We'll step aside for a timeout. Back with more from the Cotton Bowl. Back live at the Cotton Bowl. 
Grambling leading it, 22 to 23 to three. The light show from the State Fair in Dallas, Texas. Beautiful light display here from the fair. The light show was also on the field for Grambling. They had some t-shirts being worn on offense. They said quick six on the front, but on the back of the t-shirt it said, I've got 99 problems, but scoring isn't one of them. And so far, Grambling with the 23-3 lead shows exactly why scoring is not a problem for this offensive unit. Brian Morgan to kick it away. Grambling building on their lead. Circling near the five. Straight ahead for Prairie View. It was Peters. Take a look at Paul Hardeman. Hardeman with the touchdown grab. As Landers able to get it downfield. Took a nice hit after the pass. But he got Hardeman in stride. And Hardeman does the rest and streaks in. Give credit Landers for hanging in the pocket. Landers long enough to allow his wide receiver to clear and make the touchdown reception. Scoring drive for Hardeman okay. and Grambling. Two plays. That was a quick one. 68 yards, less than a minute. 46 seconds. Hardeman's first touchdown grab on the season. 23-3 lead for Grambling. Michael Hill and Prairie View trying to answer. Here, short down. Out the back to the left corner. Comes out of bounds near the 32-yard line. Hit made by Dimitri Carr. At the State Fair Classic in Dallas, Texas. It's the Tigers of Grambling State and the Panthers of Prairie View A&M. Charles Ward, Mark Lasseter with the play call. And as you can look at that wide shot, the tremendous crowd here at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. I would say we're near capacity right now. The stadium holds 68,000 and some change. We've got to have at least 65. Near closer to the halftime mark. We won't even get it to the halftime. Do you realize the newspaper here in Dallas, the Star, had national scouting report on the halftime show? They broke down halftime. The two bands from Grambling and Prairie View, actually, you would consider these two in the top five in the country, broke down the intangibles with the band. God, halftime show promises to be a good one. They got him on a face mask penalty. After the catch, Font no wrapped up around the face mask. Fairview takes advantage of the assessment. They move it up to the 48. Hill to Font no. Font no taps behind the line of scrimmage. And again, Dimitri Carr is trailing Fontenot around the field with the stop. And Coach Henry Frazier, Prairie View, trying to show some patience with his running game. Even though he's down, he's still trying to get his players into some kind of rhythm at this spot on the field. Second down, no huddle this time for Prairie View. Hill with the snap, backside pressure, the unloads at the corner. Catch made by Robinson. Robinson works his way into Grambling territory up near the 48. Talk about the Prairie View offense for a second. They feel that with the offensive lines that they have, a very young line, all sophomores, one senior, they can keep this unit together for a few years. They will actually get into the habit, into a flow, and really improve and stabilize this offense. They're trying to take it step by step. Good catch by Robinson there. Third down and six now for Prairie View. Hill changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock, no problem for him at this point. He'll take the snap. Pressure, they flush him right side. They got a handle on him, but he eludes. Now, here comes the backside pressure, and they get the sack on him. Marcus Dawson, the sophomore, with the sack on Michael Hill. Talk about the athleticism of Grambling. If they don't get you the first time, as Hill evades the pursuit, they'll get you the second time. Actually lost five additional yards with the spin move. So Eric Hernandez now will come on to punt it away. Panthers showed some signs of life on that possession, but now they have to punt it and turn it over to Grambling. If you're fair of you, you can't afford turnovers, you can't afford sacks. Carter stands near the 15. They were coming after it. End over end kick by Hernandez. Carter will have a run back. Works it at the 25. Now tries to reverse his field, and he meets the four Panthers near the 22. Nice special teams coverage by Prairie View. 
State Fair Classic, always a big event in the city of Dallas. And this one, no different. Let's take a look at some of the crowd here in the Cotton Bowl. You've got a concert next door. You've got the big way going on with all the rise of attractions. You even had the livestock fair that I know you were interested in coming in over here. Heard the prime cattle. The steer got $80,000 first prize steer yesterday. Yeah, I came in second. <laughs> First and ten for Graham, but Landers works it right side. Threw it high and incomplete and tended out in the flats for Zarek Heyman, the junior from New Orleans. Interesting spot on the field for Grambling Charles with 6.36 in the second quarter remaining. They can go conservative right here and sit on this lead, or they can decide to stay aggressive and try to put some more points on this board. Landers with shotgun. Second down and ten. They'll go to the air. Landers. Backside pressure. Pocket collapses. And the Panthers get the sack on him. Jaron Cowan, the junior from Houston, on the sack. Cowan came right up the middle and just kept working, kept working, and finally just got his arm around the quarterback. Cowan listed at 330 pounds, a junior. Just Cowan's going in over Charles Wilson, list, listed at 310, and Cowan wins that battle. Just pushing Wilson back all the way into quarterback Landers. Frazier talked about the effort of his team giving 100% for the entire ball game. Cowan gave an excellent example of it there. Landers, they're trying to set the screen and pumps it once. Now they flush him right side and raises, fires. Pass goes incomplete at the corner. Good coverage at the corner by Prairie View. And they have Landers on his bicycle. Also flagged down at about the 25-yard line. <laughs> Landers looking up top with the pump, but the pressure from the backside forced him right side. And he forced him to throw it high, trying to get it out there to Heyman again. Down After this ball. next punt, Charles, down if Perry, you can handle it cleanly, they should have excellent field position on the exchange. Fourth down. So Manuel will punt it away. That's Quarles. Quarles will back huddle near the 45-yard line for Prairie View. Prairie View shows signs of setting for a block. They're coming at it. They got a man and they got a block on it. They got a block on it in the end zone. They'll fall on it there. Touchdown for Prairie View. Loaded up the right side of the defensive line. The end came around the corner. Clean and unblocked. Looks like Marcus Johnson from Prairie View. They get the block and a quick six of their own. Something good happening for Prairie View early on. This is the second thing. Johnson at the corner. Nobody touched him. Got in, got a clean block on it. And able to go in and recover it for the touchdown. Frazier talked about special teams play. Give credit to the alignment on that last block. Broke the man free. And he took an excellent angle on the punt attempt. It was Riante Jones who got in there and blocked it for Prairie View. And Johnson able to come in after that and cover it for the touchdown. Corner after attempt by Hernandez is good. And Prairie View breaks into the scoring column again. Grambling leading and now 23. Prairie View 10. Out on the field back after this. Back live at the Cotton Bowl. Prairie View has just struck again. Grambling leading it now 23 to 10. Riante Jones on the block with the punt. Marcus Johnson on the cover for the touchdown. Prairie View gets the six and the point after. And all of a sudden, in a game that has historically been a blowout in recent years, Prairie View puts up the quick seven. They're within 23 10, making this a more competitive ball game. And that's really all Prairie View hopes to get. They want to stay close. Hernandez with the kick. High kick, and Carter will field it near the seven. Works it right side, Scott to move there. Carter at the 30, still on his feet. Now he's at the 40. Back to the inside, midfield he goes. Carter's got one man to beat. They finally get him from behind near the 32. Falls at the 30. Second time, Prairie scores, and by Grambling with a big play. It 
excellent return by Carter and Grambling special teams is kind of answering quickly the touchdown by Prairie View. Coach Henry Frazier last night talked about directional kicking. That time they decided to kick right down the middle and paid the price as Grambling set their wall to the middle and they get an excellent return. So Grambling now right back at the 31 yard line of Prairie View. Less than six minutes this quarter. Landers is in the pocket, got some time, dumps it out, and has got a man at the corner, catch made by Khan. Khan at the 17-yard line for Grambling, enough for a first down pickup. He's working against linebacker Corey Stewart, one of the leading tacklers for Prairie View. Stewart wasn't able to make the initial hit. Got to have better position on coverage. Here's the punt block. Take a look at the punt block here. You talk about excellent work by Riante Jones, just like they draw it up in the book. Stretching out with the hands crossed in front of him. And got the block on it. As you look at Manuel looking skyward for the football, comes down the Johnson for the touchdown for Prairie View. Couldn't draw it up any better for Prairie View on that play. First and 10 for Landers and Grambling. Landers, right side. Got some man on the comeback route. Catch made by Edwards. He had to work his way near the five. Very few finally pulls him down near the seven. Unusually wide splits for Grambling along the offensive front on the last play call allowed the quarterback to really survey the field, pick out a receiver on that look-in route, and pick up the enough yardage. Looks like he's about a yard shy of another first down. Landers on the night, 9 of 16 for 178 yards. And two early touchdowns here in the State Fair Classic. Second down. And less than a yard for the first. They put it on the ground, right side. Inside, with the yeah. football. Is Kwan. Kwan lost it on the surface. Prairie View saying that they have it. We'll see. Prairie View's got it. Officials agree. And Prairie View comes up with the big defensive stop. Prairie View not going quietly into the Texas night with 4.04 remaining first half. They come up with a big defensive play. Let's go ahead and give the start to Chris Mercer as he comes to the sidelines celebrating with his teammates. Watch big number 51. The first hit right here There's was the backside. Backside knock by Jeff Smith. Knocked it out of there. And Prairie View coming back on offense now. What a play for Prairie View. Turnovers even in the football game. Out the flats, they get it with the pass to Robertson. Robertson wrapped up at the sideline. Good defensive work by Brian Lankford. Prairie View also trying to get blocking downfield for their wide receivers, Greg Chapman and also Sam Robertson. Trying to carve out enough space to allow the receiver to get downfield, but Grambling's speed and athleticism dominated on the last play. So second down, they pick up on the, on the reception. So Hill will show shotgun. Takes it in the lines. Got the short side of the field to work with. Nice maneuver by Hill. Chased out of bounds near the 21-yard line. Good play fake with the football. He runs it for a first down. Two good things. First down, and you stop the clock with 318 in the second. So Prairie View up to their own 21-yard line. Hill on the season averaging 2.2 yards per carry. They go without the huddle. He's got the slot to his left. On the ground. Well, may have lost a yard on the play. Dawson on the stop. Not a whole lot in there. Grambling played that well up front. Lewis Carter, quarterback for Grambling, is matching up against Greg Chapman about two yards off the line of scrimmage. If Chapman can use technique to break free, and they can get the ball deep with enough time, it'd be an interesting spot to run a fly route. Hill with the snap. Here comes the inside pressure going up top. They got a fly route at the corner. Pass incomplete. It went in and out of the hands of the receiver, Sam Robertson. Had the right call because yet Grambling's quarterbacks are just daring Prairie View to go deep. Robinson had the step at the corner. You call the play well, Mark. That's exactly what they went to. Perfect set there. 
Defender fell down. Robinson was airborne. Just not able to pull the football in. Ball thrown right on the money by Hill. Third down, 11. Hill audibleizing at the line. Changes the play. Had some movement by the wide out flag coming in. And that'll knock him back five. Got the inside receiver about three yards downfield early. Full start. Up Changes a third a 32. and 11 to a third and 16 for Prairie View. Third down. He was changing the play at the line of scrimmage. And the slot back able to move. Go, go, go. Hurry it up. No, stay, stay. So it's third and long now for Prairie View. Third and 16 to be exact. 2.41 remains, first half. Two minutes, 41 seconds away from the Dodge halftime show. Extremely tight coverage once again by the Grammy Corners. Hill, getting pressure. They trip him up and he falls down near the three. Hill trying to improvise and retreat for enough space to make the delivery, but once again, Grambling's speed takes over, and that retreat turns into a huge sack, and Prairie View will be kicking, punting from its own end zone. Prairie View will take the timeout before they kick it away, facing a fourth down. Grambling 23, Prairie View 10. State Fair Classic from Dallas, Texas. 56 meeting between these two schools. Coach Henry Frazier's got to be on the sideline right now, Charles, talking to his special team unit. Two things. You don't want the punt block. You definitely have to get downfield in coverage with enough space because Grambling, with any kind of return at all, will be very close to the red zone off Prairie View. We remind you that some Coach of their Melvin Spears, his first year at Grambling, took over for legendary Doug Williams. We talked about the Grambling tradition. That's a tough act to follow when you're following Coach Eddie Robinson and Doug Williams. We're talking about a team that has 20 SWAC championships. Landry Carter backpedaling for Grambling. He'll receive the punt from Eric Hernandez. Assuming he can get it off, he'll be at the base of the end zone. Said to shorten his depth just a bit on this next punt attempt. He's about 12 yards behind the line of scrimmage. Low snap, but Hernandez gets it away. Grandley was trying to set the run back. Carter will field it on the scoop of the 47. Now works it left side, looking for blocks. Got one now. Cuts it up the gap. He's at the 20. Finally hit near the 15-yard line. They pull him down at the 14. The second bounce, if it doesn't get by him, he's picking up and taking it back towards the house. And on that huge return for Grambling that they didn't want to have. Landry Carter on the return. And speaking of Doug Williams, we talked about him a minute ago. There you see Doug with the Redskins. Quarterback of the Super Bowl. Voted MVP. There connecting with one of his receivers for one of the few touchdowns he threw in that football game. Just a spectacular performance. Coming off an injury to claim MVP honors. Landers. The one yard line catch made out front of the end zone by Bakari Geis. Geis down near the one. They'll mark him at the two. Working right in front of Jeremy Kendall actually had pretty good coverage. There were two other players in the vicinity. Kendall just doesn't get there in time. Wraps up a big tackle. Grambling as it stands it's at the one. Geis with the grab. His fourth of the season. It is first and goal. And it'll be first and goal to go for Grambling. Prairie View with an opportunity to get another score before the break. Now they're trying to defend as Landry Carter's hit behind the line of scrimmage. Good defensive pursuit by Prairie View Kingsley Abusola. Great defensive play. Excellent play. Let's talk about that grambling front. 360, 310, 300, 340, and 350 across the offensive wall. Usula able to get in there and make a good stop for Grambling. Shot a gap. And pulled Carter down. Second down. They go to Carter once again. Angles back to the inside. Denied once again by Prairie View. Tremendous tackle inside. 
Prairie View just not backing down and actually getting in a few shots. Unfortunately, you're going to have a flag after that play, which will be half the distance. But great pursuit and penetration by Prairie View on that last inside dive play. That play started deep in the backfield of Grambling. Prairie View just a bit over aggressive. Here's the call. Dead ball. Pushing the foul. 45. Half the distance of the goal. Out of night first down. It was Jesse Bryant. If you take a look at that play, Landers giving it in the backfield deep to Carter. Carter hit there. And they got Bryant. And it's the foul. On the ground again. Up and over the top. Touchdown, Bradley. They gave it on the dive play to Quan, and Quan goes there for one for the six. Nothing fancy to Grimley going over Tommy Durrell, 5'11", 300 pounds, right guard. They get the answer once again to the Prairie View momentum. Every time Prairie View seems to build something positive, Grambling just takes it away. Ab Quan on the touchdown for Grambling. And Morgan on now to try to point out. Morgan drives it through for Grambling. And Grambling starting to drive home a point here at the State Fair Classic. They lead it 30 to 10. So just at about 39 seconds left before the halftime, the Dodge halftime show. And it's going to be a good one. Battle of the Vans. But Grambling and Prairie View, you got a game within a game. Tough matchup as you have Grambling, which has more of a traditional style, a lot of energy. But Prairie View, you talk about showmanship. If you haven't seen Prairie View's band and their drum line, which they call the box, you're in for a treat. We'll have it for you live and uninterrupted from the Cotton Bowl. All a part of the festivities at the State Fair. Had a chance to attend the Honda Classic last year in the Georgia Dome, which was an invitational battle of the bands, if you will, about 10 bands from all over the country. And Prairie View, I would say, based on the crowd reaction, was the band of choice last year in the Honda Classic. Now, mind you, Grambling wasn't there. So we'll go head-to-head -head here at the Dodge Halftime Show. Morgan, squib kick. Wrapped up near the 23-yard line on the carry was Bar Barrett for Prairie View. A good open field tackle by just Austin James for Grambling. James. First and ten. Prairie View has an opportunity here. Probably got a shot at taking three plays if you want to think about scoring. Otherwise, Henry Frazier just may hand it off a few times, go to the locker room, try to regroup down 30-10. And we talked about it a few minutes ago or early in this first half where there were three plays in the Southern game that Coach Frazier referred to. And you can point to this first half with Grambling where just a couple of plays that Prairie View just didn't have it all in sync. The last time they got, they got the turnover from Grambling, they're not able to move the football. Grambling able to come right back and capitalize on it. It is a game of inches and just one play making a difference. And right now that's what's leading to the dejection of Prairie View. Against a team like Grambling Charles, you just can't leave the door open at any spot. Grambling's taking advantage of every opportunity Prairie View's left on the field and turned that into points. So Prairie View with less than a minute remaining in this first half. See how Coach Frazier plays it. Michael Hill, the senior quarterback, lined up in the shotgun. That Grambling scoring drive, four plays, 15 yards. A minute, 33 seconds, capped off with the one-yard run by Ab Quan for Grambling. Trying to get things reset as both bands are assembling around the perimeter field. Also on the near sideline, I think the Grand Marshal Steve Harvey has also come out of the stands getting his entourage together. So shotgun for Hill as we get set to resume play. Hill with the snap. Looking, fires, pass, got it around, and incomplete. It was intended for Greg Chapman. 
And the Panthers got a break there. Pass was partially deflected. Could have been intercepted by Grandma. A dangerous throw as Chapman was looking back for the ball. Seemed to be tipped. Got his helmet knocked off in the process. But watch the delivery behind Chapman. Just a hair. It's tipped. And there are two Grambling players in the neighborhood trying to make a play on it. Pass behind Chapman. Chapman just nailed in his tracks by Joshua Bester. That'll make it second down and 10. Now they'll put it on the ground. Fontenot working left side. And look at the heavy pursuit by Grambling following that play. And Fontenot with the carry. Pick up of about four on it. And they'll let the clock run down. Likely our last play of this first half. You look at Coach Spears at the sideline. Coach Spears trying to push the band back, I believe, or some of the players. These few seconds remaining in the first half, still trying to retain order at that Grambling sideline. Tigers leading it 30 to 10 at the intermission. A good first half of football from the Cotton Bowl. Grambling leading it 30 to 10 over Prairie View a &M. Step aside for a timeout. Back with a halftime show. show at the Safe Fair Classic is brought to you by Dodge. Dodge, grab life by the horns. And welcome back everybody inside the Cotton Bowl at the intermission. It's Grambling leading Prairie View in a first half mark of football where Grambling leads it 30-10 to 10 at the break. But in that first half, Grambling doing a good job of answering every opportunity for Prairie View to get back into the football game. Every time the Panthers score, Grambling's had an answer. Exactly. Prairie View got some momentum going. They had the early score. It went up 3-0. Grambling answers with 16 points. Prairie View once again scores. Grambling answers with the big safety. So every time Prairie View has managed to get something going, Grambling has had an answer, and they're up 30 to 10 in the halftime. One of the big concerns for Prairie View coming into the ball game was whether they could stop quarterback Brandon Landers for Grambling. And right now, Landers seeming to settle into a pattern in that first half. And it's kind of gotten a good balance of run and throwing football. Landers got hit, as we saw in the first half, but came back after the injury and delivered some great throws for Grambling. Prairie View in that first half, really their own Achilles heel, a couple of situations there that they could have seized and taken advantage of, but actually turned the tables on themselves. Well, they can't play with any mistakes. The problem for Prairie View is they're playing on such an edge is that they're not a team that has had the experience with a team at the quality of Grambling, and they have to really play flawless football. At that first half is a 3-10 lead for Grambling. Let's take a look at some of the stats, this Navy first half statistics from the Cotton Bowl. As we take a look at them on screen, it's first down, it's fairly even. But as we look at the rest, the big category in these stats is total yards. Grambling with 234, Prairie View just over 100 at 119. Interesting step for Prairie View, Charles, is the time of possession. That was something they really wanted to solve. They did that in the first half with 18 minutes to Grambling's 11.46, but they just weren't able to pick up. Look at the third downs for Prairie View. They had those drives and stopped themselves. In that passing category in their first half, Grambling almost 3-1 to one in terms of output for Prairie View in their first half. We thought it would be a passing ball game because that's what favors the strength of both offenses. But right now, it's come down to what's happening in the trenches, and Grambling's taking advantage of that. They've had some big plays from the defensive front. They have a few sacks on Hill that have really made a difference on defense for Grambling. So in the second half, the Prairie View offensive line has got to do a better job of protecting their quarterback. We talked about it a few minutes ago. The Battle of the Bands is coming up. It's 30 to 10 in terms of football, but the Battle of the Bands, it's on its way. Back live at the State Fair Classic, 30 to 10 in terms of football, but the fans here inside the Cotton Bowl are ready for some rocking and rolling with some band action. Battle of the Bands on their way will start with the Tiger Marching Band from Grambling State University. Directed by Dr. Larry Parnell, Grambling's referred to as the granddaddy of all collegiate show bands. And was one, actually one of the first to play in the Super Bowl. Down at the field level, they've already mixed it up, and the fans already into it.
Korea and China played in the 1964 AFL Championship game in San Diego, and they played three Super Bowls. interesting, Charles. They kind of mix a little old-school flair and charisma with the new-school hipness. They show a lot of variety. Grambling band. 
again coming off after the performance here in the Cotton Bowl. They'll step aside. We'll get ready for the Marching Storm Prairie View after this break. We are back live at the State Fair Classic at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas at the intermission. Grambling State leading Prairie View 30 to 10. The Grambling Band has just performed. And right now the fans getting ready to be treated by the marching storm of Prairie View. They're directed by George Edwards. He says, in pageantry, the audience hears what they see. We try to remain facing them while playing music and performing field maneuvers. Prairie View Van getting set to take the field here at the Cotton Bowl. Well, let's go down. We'll take a lesson. If you didn't see the movie Drummond, you can't really appreciate this band, but there's nothing the movie has on the drum line by Prairie View. Shameless plug. of George Bush. They played at the Battle of Flowers Parade San Antonio. The Honda Classic that we mentioned played at the opening of the Houston Reliance Stadium and performed for CBS is the early show in January of 2001. And the words, folks, on the playing surface. And I don't want to debate you about that. But it's going to be a question as who actually wins this Battle of the Bands at halftime as we continue to listen to the Marching Storm.
the entire Cotton Bowl is standing, sitting motionless with rapt attention from the Prairie View marching band. The music ask. The rhythm's gonna get you. Looks like it's gotten everybody here in the Cotton Bowl. Storm completing their performance here at the Cotton Bowl. We're at the intermission. It's Rambling 30, Prairie View A&M 10. We'll step aside for a timeout and get you started for the third quarter. The halftime show and the Battle of the Bands at the State Fair Classic was brought to you by Dodge. Dodge, grab life by the horns. We are back live in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, the State Fair Classic. At the intermission, it's the Tigers of Grambling State University 30 and the Panthers of Prairie View A&M 10. Flashing at the halftime stats as the bands return to the stand. It's interesting to note, Charles, that Prairie View actually outgained Grambling, but during the first half, they struggled with passing. As we take a look at the highlights and the scoring from the first half, Henry Tolbert found in the end zone by Landers for a 13 yards pass reception. And here, after the safety of quarterback Hill, Grambling added to the score. They add more here as quarterback Brandon Landers scrambles from nine yards out into the second quarter. It was more as Landers went up top. This time we found Paul Hardeman streaking beyond the secondary. Hardeman from 61 yards away for the touchdown grab for Grambling. Now for Prairie View, they got the block here. Leonte Jones with the block and diving on in the end zone with Marquise Johnson for the touchdown for Prairie View. Now back the other way, up and over, half quan for Grambling. And Grambling at the intermission leads it 30 to 10. Talk about the passing stats for Grambling. 196 yards passing to Prairie View's 69. That's a huge difference in this ballgame. Navy halftime stats. Just another look at those from that first half. 
things fairly well even that save for the total yards and uh, time of possession those things favoring are uh, actually surprising with the time of possession very view handling the football a lot more but grambling in those categories where it really matters total yards and in particular the passing at 196 to 69 for Prairie View. If Prairie View has any thoughts of winning this ball game, they can't afford the mistakes or any turnovers in the second half. They had the huge play on the safety, which I really think turned the momentum in Bradley's favor with not only the two points, but the excellent field position that followed the next door. Coach Frazier talking about uh, what they wanted to do coming into the ball game, shooting the gap. As we take a look at some of the scores for some teams that are going to be in here next weekend, as Oklahoma defeats Texas Tech 28 to 13, they'll be in here for that Red River shootout right here. As Texas and Baylor, you look at that final score, 44 to 14. The other complement will be in here next weekend as well. That should be a big weekend as well for college football. Two huge weekends of football at the State Fair Classic as we get a look at Coach Henry Frazier of Prairie View. We'd be very curious. Coach Frazier has a very easygoing demeanor the night before, but doesn't like to lose. He didn't come in here to have any kind of moral victory against Grambling. He wants to win this ball game more than anything else. We were talking about Coach Frazier and his Prairie View Panthers wanting to come in to try to mix things up offensively and defensively, but primarily def defensively, to find some gaps and see if they couldn't shut down that or take advantage of that big size differential by shooting those gaps and taking advantage of the speed. They were surprisingly successful, Charles, in defending the run against Grambling as Grambling will have possession to start the third quarter. Prairie View's defensive front, which we thought might have been manhandled coming in, did a pretty good job of handling Grambling's much bigger offensive line. Quarterback Landon Landers and the Tigers getting set to go on offense once we get play started in this third quarter. But Landers seemingly settled down at QB for Grambling, coming off that two-week delay, and you know, he had a chance to kind of get the season started after the injury of Eugene early on. So maybe finding his rhythm as this ball game has elapsed. And speaking of rhythm, halftime in games where you have such outstanding marching bands can sometimes extend the amount of time that players stay in the locker room as you can look at Landry Carter's numbers returning kicks for Grambling. He's been the difference maker on special teams. Carter with the nice returns in the first half. Out of long of 23 yards on a return prior to the night, but he's eclipsed at the night with a couple of fine returns for Grambling and actually put him into good field position on two big returns that led to scores for the G-men. So Hernandez, the all-swack kicker for Prairie View, will get set to kick it away to get it going in his third quarter from the Cotton Bowl. And we're underway in the third. High kick by Carter, or pulled by Carter near the three, and wrapped up near the 12-yard line. Surging on the open field tackle was Tim Gobert for the Panthers. Gobert, excellent job of getting downfield. No one had it for Grambling. He came roaring around the outside right on kick coverage. This makes a great tackle in the open field. Gobert, just like a train wreck there, running right into Carter with a stop. You play special teams, you got to be a little reckless. And Colbert that time didn't have any penetration from any of the Grambling kick return men. Just got in and did his job. Colbert, not much form on that tackle there, but did the job on Carter. That's one of those backyard tackles. Just jump up and grab the man around the shoulders. Landers, 10 of 17 in that first half for Grambling. 196 yards going up top once some more. Got a man there. Threw it behind Tolbert, though. Tolbert was near the 36-yard line. A better pass, and the Grambling's on the way again. Tolbert wide open, working in front of number six, Jason Austin, about five yards off. He's getting an earful from the Prairie View sideline at this point because that was not a good angle to take on that last pass attempt by Grambling. Tolbert with five catches on the evening, 15 yards plus per average. So Lander showing shotgun again. Four wide receivers, five wide receivers. With the snap, here comes Prairie View to the blitzing. They pick it up, though. Catch made out in the flats. This time a grab by Geis. Geis up near the 23-yard line and close to the Grambling first down. Geis looks like he'll be about a yard shy. But one of the problems with Prairie View, Charles, is that they haven't been able to get in on the quarterback in time, been able to step up, make those completions. They feel that 
spread formation, if you will, a short drop, and it's very tough to defend. They saw the blitz coming. They picked that up well. Geis cut his route off and makes the catch. And a decent run after catch by Geis. That's where the Grambling receivers are probably most dangerous. They've been open a few times, but the run and the yards after catch have really hurt Prairie View. Landers taking the time out for Grambling. 30 to 10, Grambling leading. They take a time out to discuss it. We'll step aside as well. Back with more after this. Out there. Your gasoline can make a difference if it's new Shell V power. Grambling leading it 30 to 10 over Prairie View in the third quarter. It's unpredictable and can never be scripted. It's provided us with some of great sports' greatest moments. Tuesday, Fox Sports begins a month-long journey, starting with the Division Series, then brings you exclusive coverage of the Championship Series, and culminates with the World Series and the crowning of a champion. The drama begins Tuesday on Fox. On the carry for the Tigers, it's Reuben Mays, his first carry of the ball game. Mays, the sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, in preseason, expected to get a lot of snaps for that Grambling offense, but hadn't been a whole lot of running plays for Grambling in the game overall. And Charles, once again, Prairie View surprisingly tough in the middle of the offensive line where we thought Grambling might dominate. Their defensive front has really held their own. No gain on the play by Mays. That'll make it second down. Flags at the line of scrimmage. An illegal substitution on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Still first down. Action on that. It was a first down pick up by May. So it was first and ten prior to the assessment. So five back. The Tigers go. First and 15. Not what they wanted after the timeout. To come in after the timeout and get a little chaos on your hands as you come back to play. night in Dallas. Players can't be feeling the effects of the fatigue at this point as Landers takes the drop. Going up top once again, trying to get some separation. Got it. What's there near the 40, but the pass goes incomplete. Defensive coverage provided by Jason Austin, the senior from Dallas, Texas. Excellent job by the receiver of Grambling shielding his body. Not so sure, Mark, that that football didn't hit the face mask of Edwards as he was trying to take it in. Edwards came back, and the Prairie View defensive back was breaking back to the ball at the same time. It was Jason Austin with the excellent defensive play. Got a hand in there and knocked the football away. So second down and 15. Landers back to the air. Pressure. Fires. Got a man at the 35. Catch made by Hudlin, and that's enough for the Tiger first down. Just when I was getting ready to give Luther Palmer defensive credit for Prairie View, Gremlin picks up a huge third down call, translates the first down. Watch the step up and delivery. Just about a yard past the first down mark. The receivers had to know where that marker is. They come back, give credit to Chris Peters. Let me change that. Brendan Hudlin for Gremlin. Nice reception by Hudlin. Shotgun once again for Landers. Landers with the snap. Up top once again, trying to get some separation. It's Hudlin once again. Hudlin with the grab in between two defenders. Right side, the 10, 5, touchdown, Gramlin. Hudlin flirting with danger there at the end of the run, but got it in for the 6 for the G-Men. Bruncha Hudlin on the long catch, but the breakdown was really in the secondary of Prairie View. There were two players back in coverage, weren't able to make the tackle, and Hudlin just scoots in for the extra 20 yards and the score for Bramley going up 36-10. Same deep route we've seen before in this same possession. That time, Hudlin able to get in, make the grab, and separate the defenders. You saw the defensive back for Prairie View coming in for the big hit, going airborne. All Hudlin does this was takes a step back, evades the tackle. So the point after conversion by Morgan is good. So Prairie View leads it, or trails it now 37 to 10 to the G-Men of Grambling. We'll step aside for a timeout and Prairie View with the football afterwards. Accelerate your life. College football Saturday continues from the State Fair in Dallas, Texas. As you take a look at some of the shots from outside of the Cotton Bowl, 
Grambling leading Prairie View 37 to 10, and still a capacity crowd outside at the fairgrounds. As you take a look at Husla, Bruncha Hudlin, who just caught the pass, capped that sixth place scoring drive for Grambling, two minutes, 22 seconds, with a 64 yard touchdown reception from Brandon Landers. So Grambling creating the separation now, Prairie View gotta do something to get back into it. On the return up to the 26-yard line. Return by the up man, Anthony Wright, the junior from Houston, Texas. Talk about all the activity, Charles, tonight at the State Fair and the State Fair Classic. There's a huge concert happening right beside us, and I think it's diverted the attention of a lot of the crowd. They have Jay-Z and R. Kelly right next door, two of the hottest artists out today. You also have the shows going on and the midway. From our shots outside, you could actually see the stage in which they were performing. Michael Hill on the night, 9 of 16, just 69 yards. Panthers averaging 145 yards per game in the air. Hill, short drop, dumps it out in the flats. They're going to try to throw it if they can. Man at the corner couldn't get the pass off. And hit behind the line of scrimmage. Dumped it out to Darrell Walker. Walker was showing pass. They had an idea of trying to go deep to Greg Chapman, who was breaking open right about the 40-yard line. But without the time to throw, as Grambling had penetration, wasn't able to really set up. And the one thing those running backs need when they're trying to throw the option pass, they really have to get themselves collected, get the ball, get their footwork, and then deliver the ball. Let's go ahead and give a shout-out to our camera crew there. Excellent shot from the sideline. Following Walker all the way. Walker with nothing to do with the football. And that'll make it second down and 14. Hill with the snap, in the pocket, going up top. Intended out of the flats for Chapman. Chapman coverage step for step, good defensive work for Greg Fassett. Pass goes incomplete. Greg Fassett, we talked about the Grambling quarterbacks, plays unusually tight at the line of scrimmage, reminding you of that old bump and run technique that was outlawed because of the aggressiveness of cornerbacks, and Bassett has been daring Prairie View all evening to go deep on it. Third down now for Prairie View. Prairie View with wins over Texas Southern and Paul Quinn. They lost to Southern two weeks ago. As they come back with the screen play up the middle, but read nicely by Kenneth Petway, and Petway with the stop. Prairie View barely worked back to the original line of scrimmage as Petway, who we've called all evening long, the very active linebacker for Grambling, stays in position and makes a tremendous textbook tackle. Fontenot with the reception for Prairie View, short of the first down. So Hernandez on now to kick it away. Landry Carter stands near the 26. Hernandez getting pressure but gets it away. Another fine punt by Hernandez. Carter. Dropped it momentarily, now regains. He's at a 30, up to the 35, sidestep one defender. Now at midfield, Landry Carter with some excitement for Grambling. Got it right up to midfield. Carter is dangerous, but you could almost sense a letdown on Prairie View's special teams as the tackling is not what it was in the first half. He evaded about three tackles. Watch Landry on the return. How many players get a shot at him? There's one. Two second. There. Three. Third. A four men. Fourth man finally gets it. <laughs> finally get Landry. Carter turning in a fine performance on special teams for Grambling. They'll start this drive from their own 49. Fill position for Grambling has been close to excellent all night long. I can't think of a drive that Grambling started inside their own 30-yard line. They'll start this one near midfield. Shotguns for Landers. With the snap, play fake in the line. Here comes the pressure, they flush him. Raise fires, got some separation down near the 10. Batted around and broken up by the Prairie View secondary. Good defensive stop by Santana Lane. Grambling just undaunted, going to the same route time and time again, just the middle of the field. Lane uses his closing speed to make a play on that ball as it seems to hang up forever deep downfield. Landers had that ball, delivers it about 45 yards in the air. Look at the arc on it as it comes downfield, and Landers has time up to close on the ball. Zarek Heyman, the intended receiver for Grambling, but the good to co coverage by the Panther secondary, and Lane. One of the leaders of that secondary for Prairie View, 13 tackles, two interceptions, third in the conference in interceptions. On the ground, they give it to Carter now. Carter spins, 
but he runs into three or four Panthers right side. Curious alignment by Grambling that time as they brought three wide receivers to the near side and they just ran it back to the right, trying to divert Prairie View's attention. They've used misdirection effectively so far this evening. Sometimes the ball fakes haven't been as crisp by Atlanta as you would like, but they've been enough to cause Prairie View to hesitate just a half second. Coach Melvin Spears, first year as a Grambling head coach. Worked six years as an assistant to the former head coach Doug Williams. Finally getting his opportunity to run that Grambling program, recognizes the significance of his role Lander. in the program. As Rand Landers rolls right side, raises fires and throws it out of bounds. We talked to Coach Spears last night and had a chance to ask him that direct question about how he approaches this whole idea of coming in behind two living legends. And his philosophy is premised really on three things. He doesn't approach the job simply as a coach. He sees it as a coach and mentor, recognizing that he's got to win to keep the job as a head coach, but he's also responsible for the growth of these young men, turning them into solid adults. And he also wants these players just to play to enjoy the experience of college football. Interesting to note how both coaches had off-field programs for their players that really tried to build character as much as they tried to build athletes. Manuel with a punt for Grambling now. He hits near the 28 and takes a slight Prairie View roll up to the 33-yard line. And that's where the Panthers take it over on offense. So Prairie View trailing at 37-10. to 10. Back with the football. Also curious to note, head coach Henry Frazier of Prairie View, one of his biggest challenges was distributing playing time, having tough time for players. Everybody thinks they can play. To get all the college sports you need, you tune into Fox College Sports. To get co Fox College Sports, call your local cable provider at 1-877-2-GET-FCS or log on to foxcollegesports.com. Hill now, back pedal, fires out at the corner. Catch made at the 35-yard line, spinning ahead near the 36-yard line is Arnell Fontenelle. Stop made by Donald, Donald Williams for Grambling. Out in the flats on Fontenelle. Coach Frazier very high on Fontenot. Fontenot, as this game has progressed, starting to pick up yards both in reception and running the football for Prairie View. Would be surprised to see Prairie View go run heavy in this third quarter. Hill will go under center this trip. Second down, seven for Prairie View. Flags coming in, maybe a delay a game. Number seven. Five yards coming there. Hill was trying to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Didn't have the alignment in his backfield that he wanted. The running backs weren't paying attention before he could get them adjusted. They pick up the five-yard penalty. Again, the small things that have hurt Prairie View. Now a second and seven is all of a sudden turned into a second and 12. Coach Frazier at the sideline. Doesn't sound like a lot of difference, but that can really be a big difference in the type of play that you call. They go shotgun now for the second and 12. Line of scrimmage, your own 31. Hill going up top. Hill is short, almost picked off in the secondary by Lewis Carter. Pass underthrown. Had some separation between the receiver and Carter, but the pass by Land uh, Hill not not strong enough downfield. Carter did an excellent job of keeping his body between the receiver and the quarterback as he actually had better position to make a play on that ball. Got his hands up, just seemed to slip through those gloves. Chapman turned into a defender there for Prairie View. That'll make it third down. Shotgun, trips to the left, rolls that way. Now raises, fires, dumped it on the flat, nicely done at the point. Fontenot with the grab up near the 41. That's Shy of the first down marker. That's a job of Hill of picking out the short receiver as he used Chapman to clear out. He's breaking open at about the 40-yard line, went underneath trying to pick up the first down. Nicely designed play by Prairie View. Hill to Fontenot, but good coverage out in the flats by Grambling. 
talked about it early on in the ball game. Grambling just so aggressive in terms of their pursuit. As you take a look at the total yards, yards from this quarter alone, Grambling with 90, Fairview just with 14. They're coming after the block, but Hernandez gets a booming kickoff for Prairie View, driving Carter all the way back to the two-yard line. And they'll get it in there for a touchback out to the 20 for Grambling. But Hernandez with a big booming kick for Prairie View. After the break, Grambling from their own 20. They lead it 37 to 10 over Prairie View. Back after this. FSN Southwest. College football Saturday continues on Fox from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Grambling leading Prairie View 37 to 10. 7 11 remains in the third. And Grambling with the football. They'll start this drive from their own 20. Landers, shotgun. On the ground, he gives it Pawn. Pawn right side. Pawn works it up past the 25 near the 26. Grambling still effective, Charles, with that spread offensive formation, showing pass but running underneath it. That time getting outside the corner and just picking up a big chunk on first down. Not a huge gain on first down, but if you, anytime you can pick up more than five yards, it's a productive play. Kwan with the pickup of six. Second down and four for Graham. Tigers next week. Travel to Hittaby, Mississippi to meet the Delta Devils of Mississippi Valley. And then back at Robinson Stadium for Arkansas Pine Bluff. Landers. Gonna go up top, through it high, pass back around, intercepted by Prairie View. They got a break there. Turnover with the interception, Riante Jones. Jones, the same player, to block the, the punt attempt that led to the score. We'll see if Prairie View can take advantage of it. Watch the tip as you get a look at it. The pass thrown short, tip, and the interception. Intended for Bakari Geis, but he threw it high. Geis. Got up airborne, not able to pull it down. And Jones in the right place at the right time. So Prairie View will have the football from the 40 of Grambling. Jones with another big play for Prairie View in a football game. See if they can seize the moment. Prairie View going with a different quarterback now. It's Chris Gibson. Gibson going down to the five with the pass. It's going incomplete, intended down for Chris Peters. Deontay Jones at the Prairie View sideline with the interception. Put the offense back in business, and they elect to go with a different quarterback, Gibson, now. You also have a flag back at the 37-yard line as they're sorting it out. Looks like it's going to be against Prairie View. Hold against Grambling is the initial assessment. Let's change that. On the defense, on the held of a receiver, it is a 10-yard penalty. First down. So Coach Melvin Frazier, we talked to him last night. One of his slogans is, be in the right place, do the right things, and things have a funny way of working out for you. They've gotten an interception. Now they get a penalty. They come in with the new quarterback, Chris Gibson. Talked to him last night about Gibson. He actually thinks Gibson's a better runner and passer than Hill. We'll see. He gives it up on the ground. Right side. Come in with the football. Hard hit there near the 24-yard line. They turn Arnell Fontenot around near the 24-yard line. But a good run by Fontenot close to the first down. You know, that play, Jason Hatcher for... Grambling just lowered the boom on that last run. Surprised it wasn't a fumble. Gets to the near sideline. Decent gain on first down. Second down and three for Prairie View. 5.43 clock remaining here and running in here in the third quarter. And Prairie View with an opportunity to cut into that Tiger lead. Gibson. A second sideline warning. 544 for the third quarter. Heard the official there giving that second sideline warning to Grambling. What? What? And so freshman Gibson brings him to the line. He'll show trips to his left. Transferred into the program from Bowie State. Trucked up by Gibson, out in the flats. Got a man on the turn with the catch, turning it outside. 
is Bell. Bell down near the 10 yard line. A correction on the receiving. It was Chris Peters with the reception for Prairie View and got it down near the 11. That's enough for the first. Peters flashing some speed on the near far sideline. Makes the reception and just as a blur after he catches the ball, gets a block downfield, watch the run all the way inside the Grambling 20. Peters down to the 14. So after the turnover, Prairie View pushing closer to the Grambling goal line. Gibson with the snap. Sets. Now here tucking away and running himself. Got some room left side. He's at the five. Forces his way inside the five down near the four. Initiated the contact with the defense. Gibson, the freshman, will learn better about that as he goes. But there, got it into the five down to the four. But that'll get the respect of your offensive lineman as the quarterback turned offensive and really put a lick on the defender. Picks up another first down for Prairie View. Gibson saw the hole to his left and runs to the daylight. He stepped up at the sideline and he challenged Lewis Carter head on. And he wins that battle, pushing Carter out of bounds near the four. Flags thrown at the line of scrimmage. Of illegal substitution on the offense, five yard penalty, still for Sam. It's a second illegal substitution for Prairie. You seem to have some confusion on their offense. Give credit to Gibson, though, for stepping in and doing an effective job running this offense in the third quarter. The assessment there will hurt the Panthers. We'll push him back outside the 10. Here's Henry Frazier on the sideline. Gibson and the Panthers to the line of scrimmage. It's actually the nine of Grambling. Play fake in the line. Gibson raises the end zone. Man on man. Pass caught. Did he give him a touchdown? No. Out at the back of the end zone. Incomplete. Chapman trying to plead his case, claiming he was pushed out of bounds at the back line of the end zone. Made a great catch. Looked like he did come down out of bounds, but felt contact. As you get a look at right, check out the left foot. He's clearly out of bounds. Out of the back of the end zone. <laughs> Any way you look at it, he's still out at the back of the end zone. Good camera work by the crew all on top of that play, no doubt about it. Second down, goal to go for Prairie View. Gibson, play fakes, rolls it right side. Pressure tremendous by Grambling. Banged hard here at the six-yard line. Gibson chased out of bounds. Give credit to the speed of the Grambling defense for diagnosing that pitch to the outside. Gibson tried to make the pitch. Let's see if you can take a listen. Here's the hit. I heard it. Near sideline. Helmet to helmet. And pad guess, to pad. Guess who's responsible for the hard hit? And it's Petway. Gibson. And Grant and Prairie View to the line of scrimmage. Petway just turning in a fine performance for Grambling tonight. Really just echoing and verifying everything that we were told about him coming into tonight's ball game. And Prairie View just a bit uncertain of their play call. Has to call timeout and get to the sideline to confer with their coaching staff. They really don't want to waste this opportunity, even though they're down 37-10. Again, they're trying to really make some positive strides in this offense. Take a look at Petway on screen. All swag player for Graham, second team or our first team SWAC player for Graham coming into the season. We talked about the big performance he had against Bethune Cookman and talked to Coach Spears and he said that was really a stellar performance by him as you take a look at some of that, some of his accolades coming into this season. The thing about Petway, he's not a one-dimensional player, Charles. He's actually a very strong player. A lot of people feel that his best attribute is against the run, but we've seen him in pass coverage so far this evening getting 
back into coverage and getting it on plays. Definitely one of the leaders of that defense program, and not only in terms of performance, but they count on him just in terms of his presence to settle that entire defense. Grambling starting out slow at the beginning of the season with the one and two mark. We talked to Coach Spears about that. So he wasn't truly worried about that. That's been kind of one of the historical traits that early on, if they lose a ball game, it'll be early in the season. But he says when they crank up that big red machine, if that's what they call it, in October and early November, that's when Grambling really starts to tell the story in the swag. Gibson across the middle pass, batted at the line of scrimmage, and knocked down by Dimitri Carr. Actually had a man breaking open in the corner of the end zone, but the pressure from the outside by Grambling didn't give him enough time to see the receiver, Jackson, who was about 10 yards in the open in the far corner. So that'll make it fourth down for review. The freshman quarterback, Gibson, will stay on the field. They'll go for it on this fourth. They got to hurry, get to the line of scrimmage. Play clock, clock you see that up in the corner, running down. We won't get this playoff, I don't believe. Whistles at the line of scrimmage. Timeout. Looks like they got a timeout. They got a real break. They got a break from Grambling. Grambling took a timeout. One of the difficulties in switching quarterbacks is that sometimes that rhythm to the line of scrimmage is not what you would like it, but Grambling bailed out for if you would call the timeout. So they'll have another shot at it, but it's a huge fourth down call for Prairie View. Trailing at 37 to 10 to Grambling. Last year's game here in the Cotton Bowl, Grambling won that 65 to 7. You talked about it early on, Grambling with over 600 yards of total offense in that ball game. The transition for Prairie View with the additional scholarships has made it a lot more respectable thus far in this contest. But still, a lot of work to be done by that Prairie View program overall, recognizing that the, they're going to get to the top echelons of the SWAC conference. It's Grambling and teams like Southern that they're going to have to go through to get there. And there was an ugly stretch in this series that dates back to 1989. Listen to some of the scores. 1989, Grambling, 49-0. 91, 77-7. 92, 63 to 3, 93, 49 to nothing. So that's the kind of problem that Prairie View has had matching up against this very talented Grambling franchise, if you will, one of the best college programs in the country. Fourth down play for Prairie View. Gibson going to try to run it in himself. Runs in the traffic, now cuts back the other way. He's got a seam in there. Cuts it to the outside. Touchdown, Prairie View. Chris Gibson, the freshman. Saw it at the line of scrimmage, runs it left side, saw the traffic there, cut it back the other way, just on his own whim and able to get it in for Prairie View. Coach Frazier talked about the running ability of Gibson. Watch him take it to the left, change his mind abruptly, break it back to the right. Lyman trying to scramble to their feet. He just finds an opening in the end zone and takes it in himself. Coach Frazier said that he was a better runner than Michael Hill. On that play, Gibson runs it in for the Prairie View touchdown. Even carried the ball like a fullback or a halfback, tucking it away properly, getting the score. So Prairie View with the touchdown. Come on with the point after attempt. And that is good by Hernandez. It's 37-16 now. And Prairie View refusing to go away. 328 remains in the third quarter. As we get set to go to the break, let's take a look at the touchdown run by quarterback Gibson. 37-17, Grambling leads back after this. Back live at the Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas. Grambling leading Prairie View, 37-17. Coaches for the various institutions on the left, Melvin Spears for Grambling. Henry Frazier, his team just scored a touchdown. He's ahead in hand at Prairie View. And we were talking about Coach Frazier and Prairie View, and, and you read the list of score disparities in terms of the recent history of Grambling and Prairie View. He recognizes fully that uh, they haven't gotten to where they need to be in terms of the tiers of the conference, but certainly has a concept in mind to get them there. He's already got a plan. He's already got an idea of what players he wants to replace with scholarship as he adds additional players. Hernandez with the kick for Prairie View. It comes down to Carter at the five. 
Carter dances back to the right. Now the middle of the gun he goes. Got some room to the outside. Watch Carter go. He's at the 40. Back in midfield now. Inside of Prairie View territory, and it never fails. Prairie View scores. Carter comes back, makes the difference, gives Fr Grambling a chance to answer. The problem for Prairie View is once the first player misses on coverage, Carter has an explosiveness. Watch the penetration and the miss, the whiff right there, that allows Carter to break into the open. Once he gets into the open field, it's very difficult to catch up to. Carter with the carry on the return for Grambling. And they're set up well from the 35 of Prairie View. Carter back on offense as well for Grambling. 313 remains in the third. And Grambling trying to answer the touchdown by Prairie View. As this time Landers goes under center. They bring Carter in motion, misdirection back on the inside. Tolbert lost it at the line of scrimmage. He was hit. Trailer View trying to pick it up near the 38 yard line. And I think they Grambling dive has on it. it. We'll see who got it. Two players had a shot at it for Prairie View, and I think the third man for Grambling actually made the recovery. So Grambling draws a break there. Daryl Rogers able to fall on that football somehow. Three Panthers not able to pull it in. Players sometimes get a little bit happy thinking of visions trying to get that score all you want to do if you're a coach is constantly tell your players just fall on the ball and wrap up they trying to run and pick it up at the same time they kick it around and rogers falls on it and what a break for grambling an injured panther down on the field right where that scrum took place for the football and those are the small things that, as Prairie View rebuilds, they've got to learn how to make those kinds of plays when they're right there standing for them to take. I mean, Prairie View had the turnovers against Southern. They had the interceptions. And that's the kind of thing that they just got to do a better job with if they're going to turn this program around. Darrell Rogers with the recovery from Grambling. They'll keep the football. Lost about four yards on that play. 242 remains in the third for the Pirates of Prairie View next week they meet the Braves of Alcorn under coach Jimmy Johnson Jimmy Thompson that is and then they follow with three a home three games in a home stand there at their at their place with Alabama State and Lincoln for homecoming the week after that Let's get a brief look at coach Henry Frazier if there's ever a coach that could turn this thing around at Bowie State he actually is the winningest coach at Bowie State. Turned that program around. Is actually coach of the year in CIAA as well. And he won his conference's division championship two years in a row. Talking to him last night, he felt confident that coming into this ball game, they had something within their playbook that would work against the Grambling defense. They haven't had a whole lot of success tonight offensively. But you just, you know, talking to him, you just have to be impressed with his character and where he thinks he can take, to take this program and what he feels to be the important things that he can bring to that Prairie View football program. Player down for Prairie View is Kingsley Adebu Sola, defensive lineman. He's a freshman, finally getting back to his feet. And walking away under his own power, that's a good sign. So Grambling will keep the football. As Abisola comes to the sideline, looks to be a little bit shaken and dazed as he walks away. We'll see if he returns. Landers. Carter in motion. They give it to Carter, right side. Carter looking for room to the outside. Dances. He lost, he lost the football again. It's loose on the surface. This time, Prairie Review says that they have it. They get it we'll the second see. time. Much better technique and recovery for Prairie View as Carter was skating right around the 40-yard line. Got hit from the side. He coughs it up. Look at it from ground level. They're right from behind. Corey Stewart stripped it out of there, and it was recovered by Santana Lane. So, once they miss it, second time they get it. So, Prairie View back on offense. 
Abusola still being worked on on the Prairie View sideline. And Chris Gibson working on trying to land himself a starting role as the Prairie View quarterback. Gibson shows shotgun. With the snap, looks up field, and pushes right side. Gibson rolling, raises, fires, got a man under the window. Had a man down near the 46-yard line, intended for Bertram Jackson. One thing you notice instantly about Gibson, the quickness evading the first tackle. He took that quick step to his right, got to the outside, bought himself enough time to make that delivery downfield. Pass goes incomplete. Second and 10 for Prairie View. Shotgun for Gibson. On the ground. Gives it to Fontenot. Fontenot working ahead near the 42-yard line. One of the things that Gibson will have to work on is his recognition of this press coverage by Grambling. Their safety has been very deceptive at the last minute, disguising his coverage while they've been playing their quarterbacks almost at the line of scrimmage. If Gibson can, Gibson can predict which way that safety is going to lean, he can try to go the opposite direction. Third down and four for the Prairie View first. Play clock at three, they gotta hurry. Gibson with the snap, they get it off. Will fake it, now raises, fires through it behind the receiver. A dangerous throw in traffic as he was trying to get something on the crossing pattern. You can see the Prairie View receivers looking at one another with arms outstretched. It's like, you're a little bit too close to me on that last pattern. Trying to get it to Fontenot. Fontenot would enough for the first down if he'd caught the football, but the pass thrown behind him. So Hernandez now set to kick it away. Grambling will get it back on offense. Carter stands near the 10. Snap to Hernandez and the kick. Hernandez with another fine punt for Prairie View. Carter suffers, pummels it near the 15. Now corrals it near the 7. Back pedals to the right side. Looking for a block. They wrap him up and sling him down near the 6. So Carter flirting with disaster back there on the return. Carter changed his mind twice on that reception, punt return. Actually, player down in coverage of preview missed on the tackle not once, but twice. Watch the fumble by Carter. The first miss. He'll get back up. The second miss. Finally wrestled down by Tristan Springer. Springer showing shows the signs of his roping abilities with the pull down of Carter. Less than a minute remains in the third. Nice direction to keep it on the inside. Working to the right side for Grandin on the carry. It's Mays. Mays with a big ground gainer. They finally push him out of bounds near midfield. Ruben Mays. Tigers going with that kind of veer offense on the inside with a couple of misdirections on the handoff, and they give it to Mays for a big round game. Nothing fancy. This is the point in the game, Charles, where you're just starting to wear down Prairie View's defense. They get to the outside, and Mays finds space. Right if he gets past the line of scrimmage, there's no one back for Prairie View, and he has clear sailing out to almost midfield. Line of scrimmage now is the 47. Mays with the first down run. Landers, Mays once again, inside of Panther territory, banging ahead near the 46-yard line. This is the part of the game when fatigue starts to take over. Coach Frazier may be better served looking at some of those players on the depth chart to see if he can give some of the defenders a blow. The time of possession, I would say, is starting to swing much in Grambling's favor in the third quarter. Grambling leading at 37-17, likely our last play of this third quarter from the State Fair Classic. And indeed, that will be. That is the end. We played three thus far, 37-17 after the end of three. Take a look at some of the highlights, including Steve Harvey, one of the celebrities on hand. We'll take a break. We'll start the fourth after this. I'm Max. Weeknight.
Sports on FSN. Back live at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Inside of the State Fair, folks on the midway trying to get that last ride in before the show closes up for tonight. Enjoying the State Fair. We'll take a look at the score by quarter in this ball game. Even play at the end of the third, the third quarter, that is. Grambling leads it overall. On the carry was Mays. Once again, left side. Mays got it down near the 37. Haven't talked about it a lot, but Grambling's had a lot of production out of their freshmen this year, Charles. Talk about Brandon Landers, Bandy Carter, Clyde Edwards, Jason Banks. First and 10 after the run by Mays. Mark it at the 38-yard line. Landers and Grambling. Landers lost a handle on it, coming underneath the center. Falls on it near the 40-yard line. We haven't had a chance to talk about this either, but we certainly want to thank all the fine folks from the SWAC office for making this possible in conjunction with the folks at Fox Sports. This is actually a historic evening as Fox has picked up the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and uh, we hope it's the first of many. Assistant Commissioner for the SWAC, Jay Ropes, and sitting down to our right, enjoying the football game here from the State Fair Classic. He and Commissioner Robert Viles and the rest of the fine staff at the SWAC deserve a lot of credit for where they're taking that conference and the steps they're taking in that journey. On the ground, Grambling loses a couple of yards. Good defensive stop there up front by Chris Mercer, the senior from San Antonio. The action up front, Grambling's offensive line, but again, Prairie View unusually tough right in the middle of the field. We talked to the defensive coordinator for Prairie View. He said the one thing that they definitely wanted that defense to do was to play 100% percent play a full 60 minutes. On that play, it showed no quit on behalf of the Panther defense. You talk about that defensive coordinator, Luther Palmer, got it started at Western State Penitentiary in Pennsylvania. Timeout by the Tigers of Grambling. will step aside as well. They lead it 37-17. Back live at the Cotton Bowl, Grambling leading at 37-17 over Prairie View. Let's take a look at our Dodge drive of the game. After a field goal by Prairie View, here was the drive answered by Grambling. On the return of the kick, it was the ever dangerous Landry Carter returning it to set up the offense for Grambling. Landers goes directly to work. He went straight up top to Henry Tolbert for a long game. And here, Landers caps it off again with the touchdown pass to Tolbert for Grambling to answer. And that was our Dodge drive of the game. Dodge for grab life by the horns. And while we're away, Prairie View picks up a fumble by Grambling. Chris Mercer makes the recovery and all the way inside of the Grambling 40-yard line. So Prairie View with yet another opportunity here. Got to give credit to the defensive effort. We talked to Luther Palmer yesterday. He talked about just the idea of instilling in this defense an ethic that they would play for the entire ball game. Landers wrapped up good defensive work by Johnson. It was loose and free for Mercer to grab it. So here come the Panthers now. Gibson spins out of coverage, works his way up near the 32-yard line. Pursuit so heavy once again by Grambling. Gibson able to find the lane. Kenneth Petway, the linebacker for Grambling, slow to get up after that play and making his way to the Grambling sideline. One thing to note, Prairie View's actually been pretty effective on first down. It's the second and third down calls that have got them in trouble. Here comes the second down call for Prairie View. Shotgun for Gibson. With the snap, gives it to Fontenot, right side. Fontenot leads one defender down near the 25-yard line. Looks to be enough for the Prairie View first. I think you're right. He's got enough for the first down. You've got to give credit to Prairie View as Grambling, looks like, is now on its heels early in this fourth quarter. Watch Fontenot in the explosion as he gets the line of scrimmage. Nothing fancy, just uses that footwork and speed to break space. Stop made by Brian Langford, the sophomore from Tampa, Florida. First down pickup by Fontenot and Prairie View. They come to the line of scrimmage. 
The Grambling 25. Snap to Gibson. With the drop. Looking. Fires Gibson across the middle. Mm. Pass incomplete. Thrown behind two receivers in the very same area. Dangerous throw is actually two receivers, as you mentioned, and three Grambling defenders right in the area. And Gibson. That pass thrown behind the receiver badly. A better throw there. He's got two prime targets right there in his face. Either one catches that. That's close to a prayer view touchdown. Second down and ten. Gibson going to try a quick option right, left side. Gibson gets the move, now spins to the outside. Nicely played by Grambling. Take a look at Gibson getting up. Let's look at some of our stats through three quarters of play here in the State Fair Classic. Total yards still favoring Grambling at 382 at this point, but look at the time of possession, Mark. Interesting that the time of possession that Prairie View wanted to dominate, they still have a significant edge in. The problem for Prairie View has been the passing yards and return yards. Return yards really tell the story here in this football game. A lot of that from Landry Carter, but that's been the real difference because Grambling's had great field position throughout the night. Gibson getting pressure now. Boy, he loses one defender. Nicely done by Gibson. Working right corner. Looking for a block. Got one there. Back into the inside. Going to be awfully close to that Prairie View first down. Tremendous block downfield, but the last reach downfield. I think he's going to have the first down. What a move by Gibson. Just the presence of mind to elude this, the sack. Take a look here. Gibson, one of those quarterbacks, seems to enjoy running, pulls it down, finds space to the outside, and then gets a block downfield. Coming back downfield, picks up the first down. Arnell Fontenot downfield from his running back spot to divide the block for Gibson. That's enough to free him up to get the first. First and 10 on the ground. Fontenot works it right side, pushing the pack near the 14. I keep going back to last year's score, that 65 to 7, as Prairie View gets on this road to respectability. 37 17, not bad. A score here gives you a, it just looks better on the scoreboard. Lots of time left here from the State Fair Classic. Over 10 minutes remaining. Gibson this time going to go underneath center. Second down and seven for Prairie View. Gibson, short three steps drop, fires it off the glass, got a man over there, pass complete to Jackson. Jackson spins his way down near the six. Excellent job of holding on. The reason I mentioned that, Charles, last four out of five years, Prairie View hasn't broken double figures in this game. The catch, watch the step into space, nice little cut back. Third and short coming out for Prairie View A&M. Jackson, the senior from Houston, Texas, with the grab. That play just designed to get it into his hands and see if he can make something happen. There, Jackson did. Third down. And two to go for the throw. One to go for the Prairie View first down. Down at the six of Prairie View. On the ground. They give it to Fontenot. Fontenot finding his way down inside the five. Working the right side. Still pushing the pack. Will they give him a touchdown? They're going to throw a flag in there. No touchdown signal given yet. They were pushing him forward, and the flag came in. You may get an aiding the runner as you see some of the grambling defenders clapping with Fontenot, showing extra drive and push. He had contact at the five-yard line, just kept leaning and leaning forward, got all the way inside the one-yard line. Here comes the call. Indeed, it will be aiding the runner. Against the Panthers. Of a five yard penalty for helping the runner gets the offense. The five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still third down. Watch the leg drive by Fontenot. One runner. Three defenders now have a shot at him. He's still pushing forward. See the offensive lineman pulling him toward the end zone. Third down now. Gibson going to keep it himself. Gibson fights his way near the goal. Touchdown, Prairie View. 
Chris Gibson following his blocks nicely on the inside with the runner's feet, able to run for the touchdown. Made the ball fake and extremely decisive. Once he pulls the ball back, he's not hesitating, knew exactly where he wanted to get to the middle of the field, gets into the end zone for Prairie View, and a very respectable 37-23 score. No question about it. Found the hole to his left, and Gibson able to run it in. Going after by Hernandez, he drives it through. Even though that was a ball fake intended, play had a look almost like a quarterback draw. Gibson on the touchdown run, 37-24, Prairie View trails Bramley. Back live from the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Some of the additional sights and sounds from the State Fair. They're part of the parade, some of the floats from the parades, and tonight some of the nightlife from the fair just outside of the Cotton Bowl. A lot going on, and we've given a lot of attention to the grabbing players drafted in the NFL, but you know, Prairie View has a great history as well. Four come to mind, Otis Taylor is drafted in the fourth round, Ken Houston taken in the ninth round, Sam Adams who played for the New England Patriots, and one of my all-time favorites, Clem Daniels, who played for the Oakland Raiders. Nice, impressive history by Prairie View in terms of professional presence as well. Grambling set to receive as Hernandez boots it away for Prairie View. Carter grabs it near the 11. Carter up the middle, he goes, bang hard near the 33-yard line. Punishing tackle there by Prairie View. They roll up Carter real hard, and Carter is down. Carter took a real wicked shot. Bramley will start to drive him at 33. As you look at Carter on the night, four returns. And look at that average, 39 yards per return for the long of 61. First player downfield was Tristan Springer for Prairie View. Got that lick in and went to the sideline. They wanted to play well on special teams. Give credit to Springer on that last coverage. So Bramley on offense, 42 remains in the football game. Each time Prairie View has scored, Prairie View uh, has been able to answer. We'll see what they do on this possession. Right side, they work it to Rogers. Rogers works his way up near the 47-yard line, runs it for the Grambling first. Interesting tackling technique by Prairie View also, Charles. You watch them get their helmets in on the ball. That time, Grambling came out in a tight formation, showing run all the way, but Graham, Prairie View just not able to defend that. Terry and Rogers, his first carry on the night, goes for the Grambling first. Whistles at the line of scrimmage. A lot of movement up front. Prairie View and Grambling linemen jumping offsides. Get the call from downstairs. Dead ball. Full start. Offense. 6 0. The motion call on Lance Wright, the center, all swag second team center for Grambling with the movement. It makes it first and 15 for the junior. Landers brings a man in motion, takes it in the line, and the wrestle down behind the line of scrimmage with Rogers. Heavy pressure in pursuit by Prairie View. Prairie View with a six-man front loading up the front wall. Two linebackers came up to the line of scrimmage as well. They're really doing an excellent job of playing the grambling offensive line. Eric Cowan leading that search for Prairie View. It's second and long again for Grambling. T set as Landers takes the drop, going up top. Pass downfield and incomplete. Intended for Bakari Geis, but Geis covered step for step by Jason Austin. Jason Austin, once again, doing an excellent job of positioning himself between the ball and the quarterback. Actually had a position where he could have made a play on that ball. He, he looked back a little bit earlier. That'll make it third down. If Prairie View can hold here, they'll get the football back. If you had to define momentum, I'd have to definitely say Absolutely. it's in Prairie View's favor in the th third and fourth quarter. Third and 17 for Grambling from their own 39. I love the 
50 total yards in this quarter thus far. Trying to set the screen, Landers throws it to the one of the linemen and flags coming in all over the place. Tried to get it upfield, he threw it to Andre Bennett. <laughs> Bennett did catch it, but you can't do that. <laughs> but you know, here's the upside for Prairie View on the box play by Grambling. They're going to take over on offense in decent field position if this holds up. There'll be a loss of down, and Prairie View has a chance at another return. Coach Spear scratching his head like, what in the world was that? <laughs> Talking to running back Abquan, now Landers joins in the conversation. A lot of explaining to do on that. Well, you got a freshman quarterback. That may happen from time to time. The linemen look up. <laughs> he's 350. And he's looking at the ball coming at him. It's, what is this? And you got to know right now that Coach Spears is experiencing exactly what you talked about a few minutes ago. He knows his momentum has shifted. And this is a critical transition of the football back to Prairie View. Well, you know, it's interesting. If you're grambling, and they've really been trying to... Yeah. Offensive pass interference. Yeah. We had a personal foul. Ahead to the blow of the quarterback. Those fellas are well all set. Repeat third down. Boy, after all that. Another look at Landers, back and just looking downfield, came down right on his helmet, the lineman for Prairie View, that is. And Bennett with the reception. So the offset, and it'll remain third for Graham. <laughs> So Landers will go shotgun now. Landers, slight roll to his left. Up the containment's got plenty of room in front of him. Now the raise fire and got a man there near the 38-yard line. First down for the G-man. Just when you think Prairie View has contained, Landers comes up with a huge first down play for the G-man. He rolled left side. Tolbert was able to break himself free with the reception at the sideline. Buys himself space and time getting to the left. Grambling has had receivers clear all evening against Prairie View secondary. Finds a man, picks for first. We talked about it early in the ball game. Coach Frazier talking about the three plays in the Southern game that made the difference for Prairie View. There you can tack on another one tonight that makes the difference if they don't hit the quarterback in the head on that attempted pass. They may get this football back on the punt. Instead, they give up the first down to Grambling. Coaches will always talk about discipline in a football game. It's not the physical errors that will drive them crazy, although it'll be the mental errors that will cause a team like Prairie View to stay in that rut. Another flag thrown on the surface. Offside, defense, number 45, five yard penalty, repeat first down. Jesse Bryant, the junior from Houston, Texas. Guilty of the offside. See a temporary look of frustration on Henry Frazier's face. Very personable head coach. But he had to be feeling that every time Prairie View's gained some momentum, it dumped something to, to lose it. So it's first and five for Grambling. Landers with pressure, dumps it up top. Got a man, that's Tolbert. Tolbert works it left side. A lead one to finish. Now another. Tolbert down near the 10 and out of bounds. It was kind of a shuttle pass to Tolbert, if you will. Tolbert able to catch it and broke three tackles on the play and runs it for the first. As they have all evening, Charles, that run up the catch by the Grambling receivers there. Quick and elusive. Watch the footwork as he takes the shovel pass. Makes a quick move there, a little jab step, gets to the sideline, cuts back, very acrobatic. I'd say after the pitch, 15 yards on his own. So the question that started this drive was would they answer the touchdown by Prairie View? After some help by the Panthers, Tigers seemingly ready to answer at this point. First and goal to go now from the 10 of the Panthers. And a stoppage of play. When the team breaks the hole, the band the plan. You heard the referee. Those were his directions. Now, if they're followed, we'll have to wait and see. Grambling. 
Lining it up. First and goal to go. Landers now will take a snap. Gives it in the line. Right side. Corn with the football. Corn works it down near the five. This is one of those defensive stands, Charles, at this point in the game. This is where players are just playing for pride. Game is a little bit out of hand. But Prairie View, as they're trying to turn this program around, they've got to get in a tradition. Instead of allowing games like this to become a blowout, you really want to keep your players playing at 100% until the final whistle. Surely 37-24 looks a lot better than another score by Grambling. But Grambling on the way to another. Vaughn working at right side. Bites his way down near the two-yard line. Gang tackle there. Tackle led by Santana Lane. That's a name we've called a lot this evening, Santana Lane. And coaches will make those mental notes of players that make big plays down the stretch of games like this in the fourth quarter. We also see Corey Stewart on the screen. He was a part of that tackle as well. Stewart came into the ball game leading the Panthers in tackles with 26. It's third down, goal to go for Graham. At the two-yard line. Trying to punch in another here. Less than four minutes remaining in the State Fair Classic. Flags at the line of scrimmage. It looks like the Delaney juniors are going to be guilty. Offense, number seven, still third down. So Grambling looking not as sharp as they could be as well. There they get guilt, get another violation of the play clock. And this is a young Grambling team. We talked to their coaches. They weren't really happy with what they had done early in the season. They seemed to be making some progress, but they hadn't hit that stride or that rhythm that they wanted to see. You talk about being happy with what's been done. You looked at Brandon Landers' numbers on the screen. They're over 300 yards in the air. That's his first as a brand new player. He'll take a snap here. Looking, going in into the corner in the corner. He ends up see a flag there. Intended down there for Zarek Haven. Haven covered in the corner of the end zone. By Gibb Dungey and Dungey guilty of the infraction in the end zone. And Dungey simply didn't turn around, was defending with his back to the quarterback as the ball was in the air. Contact, and that'll be called every day of the week. Very clear call downfield in the corner of the end zone. Defensive pass interference in the end zone. The ball will be placed on the two yard line for sound. Watch the technique by the defensive back who stays with his back to the quarterback and just tackles the receiver in the open field. Never did turn around and was shoving all the way and pushed him to the ground. That's not the way you draw it up. The result, the Tigers take it down to the two. First and goal to go. So Landers with a fresh set of downs on the ground. Quan right side will pick it over before the touchdown. Quan with his second touchdown run of the ball game. Grambling just loaded up the right side, ran behind big Jamar Dorsey, 6'3", 330. Nothing fancy, just a straight-ahead dive play. Watch that Grambling offensive push on the right side. Space and a touchdown. Look at that shot in the end zone. Two or three Grambling linemen just laying on the defenders inside the end zone. So you know where the football winds up. Touchdown for Grambling. Morgan with the kick, and he converts on the point after. Grambling leading it now, 43-24 as we go to the break. We'll take a look at the touchdown run by Quan right side. Up and over, touchdown, Grambling with the lead. The State Fair Classic was brought to you by Dodge, the Navy, Russell Athletics, Coca-Cola, and by State Farm. Back live in Dallas, Texas, inside the Cotton Bowl. It's the State Fair Classic with Grambling leading at 44-24 over the Panthers of Prairie View. Coach Henry Frazier talked about cutting the deficit against Southern in half. This year, he's got to feel a little bit better about this Grambling team in his first year. As they go on the kickoff, the return comes down to Anthony Wright, and Wright streaks the sideline and finally bounced out of bounds near the 41. Look at Anthony right after the return. A nice return, but the dejection starting to set in on the preview players. Grambling once again answering a touchdown by Prairie View with a touchdown of their own. They lead it 44-24.
which is three minutes remaining here from the State Fair class. Chris Gibson took over in the third quarter from Michael Hill for Prairie View. He's going up top, trying to get some separation pass, batted around near the 20, intended downfield for Greg Chapman. Chapman had a shot at that football, but knocked away by Lewis Carter. Carter tipped the pass, actually did not knock it down. The ball was up for another second or two, and actually, Seabra had a second shot at it as he turned back towards his quarterback. Here's another look at it. Ball in the air. Watch the tip. And the receiver just a hair away from the ball. So Gibson showing a lot of arm on that pass downfield. But it goes incomplete, second down 10. Gibson in the pocket, pumps once. Now he works it right side. Somebody got him by the jersey. They're holding on. They'll get the sack on him near the 26. <laughs> Justin Kador, the junior from Opelousas. Kador goes 6'5", 280. He's a junior. Watch the footwork, eluding the tackle, and then the strength in his hands to hold on to the quarterback, swing him around a couple of times, and get the sack. So that'll make it third down now for Prairie View. And actually, they'll give credit to the sack for Jason Hatcher. And over the line of scrimmage, tried to get the pass. They had the screen set, but the pass thrown high, intended for Anthony Wright. And a late flag thrown in at the end of that play, back at the 15-yard line. Somebody may have hit him in the head as he was passing. We'll check it out. Personal foul of number 77, Prairie He will be ejected. indication that the personal foul went against Chris Thomas, the senior from Beaumont, Texas, for Prairie View. That's something you don't see often. A senior lineman ejected at the end of the ball game. Chris Thomas gets the penalty and an early shout. So Thomas gets retired early here tonight at the State Fair Classic. And the assessment goes against Prairie View, so Hernandez will come on to kick it away. So some of the frustration setting in on the players from Prairie View. Up there, it was Chris Thomas. Hernandez lost the ball handle on the snap, and they'll get the sack on him in the end zone. All right, loose. Now Prairie View will pick it up, running it right side. Let's get good clear of space here and see if they can pick up a first down. Down near the 32-yard line, out of the chaos, <laughs> Rambling will still have the football as Hernandez tried to handle the snap right near the goal line, lost it, tried to regain himself. They hit him in the end zone. He fumbled, and they pick it up and run it up to the 32. You sure that wasn't a fumble, Ruski, where the punter just doesn't leave the ball in the end zone? Watch the play as Grambling has penetration. The ball sits for a couple of counts of the Prairie View players takes it down the sideline about 10 yards short of the first down. And it was picked up by Marlon Stevens, but on that replay, it looked as though a Hernandez was trying to toss we it have out. a safety. They're going to rule it a safety for Grambling. Second and they're safety. rule Hernandez down in the end zone. So the second safety of the ball game, as you indicate, for the Tigers of Grambling. Take a look at the Prairie View sideline. We get some clarity from our producer, Tom Hewitt, as to what happened down there. Hernandez. By virtue of fumbling it on the fourth down, he's the only player for Prairie View who can advance that football on a recovery. As it was picked up by Marlon Stevens, that gives the automatic safety to Grambling. Second free kick for Prairie View. And as we saw in the first half, Charles, Grambling came out of the first safety with great field position because of the excellence on the return. Next time, 
on this return it will make the reception probably around somewhere around the 20-yard line and with their success you can see them even pulling their players up even closer Grambling could take over on offense somewhere near to midfield so for the second time tonight eric hernandez will have to punt it away after it's safe the short kick by hernandez builded by ruben mays near the 40. mays rumbles his way near midfield they'll mark him down at the 49 yard line and now let's take a look at our Russell Athletics play of the game. Here it comes from Landers, the quarterback took a shot there, but able to get it downfield. Paul Hardeman on the receiving end of a 61-yard touchdown pass from Brandon Landers. And that's our Russell Athletics play of the game. Exciting play. That play actually came in that second quarter of action from the State Fair Classic. So Landers going up top and wants the boys got a man wide open near the 10-yard line. Catch made and falling near the five. Zarek Haven. Haven with the grab down near the six. Henry Fraser last night gave credit. He said if a coach wants to throw the ball on me late in the fourth quarter and we can't stop him, more power to him. You'll get another look at Haven wide open down the left side as Grambling's receivers have been getting deep on Prairie View all evening long. If Prairie View has any air that they want to improve on a defensive backfield, it's got to be some of the speed at the safety position. Heyman bobbled, bobbled it momentarily, but holds on. Now they're going back to the corner of the end zone, right back to Heyman again, and he gets the touchdown in the corner. So Grambling just continuing to throw the football, building on their lead as Heyman gets the grab, left corner of the end zone. Now it's 52-24 Grambling. Now, if someone looks at this score in the paper tomorrow and sees that 52-24, do you say same old prayer view, or does the person that attended the game say, well, maybe this team has made some improvements and some slight strides to be proud of against Grambling? Excellent call on that, because if you look at the number tomorrow, you're going to say, well, they just got blown out. There's a lot more to it than what, what, what the paper will indicate tomorrow. Kick by Morgan. Low kick, but Morgan drives it through for Grambling. So they lead it now 53-24 over Prairie View. And Heyman at the Grambling sideline after the touchdown grab. Two catches in a row for Heyman. Second one winds up with the touchdown. It's obvious the work that Prairie View has to do is on defense. They weren't able to generate much of a pass rush. They did a surprising job against the run, but I wouldn't be surprised to see their coaching staff really try to load up on defensive linemen in the offseason. Grambling band still playing here inside the Cotton Bowl. So the 56th meeting between these two teams has about a minute remaining in it. It's enough time for me to say how much pleasure it's been to work with you, Mark. It's been great to be here, and thanks to Fox for covering the SWAC. Take a look at Kenneth Petway at the sideline. Slightly injured in the football game for Grambling late in. But now he's at the sideline and may be retired for the remainder of the night. But Petway turned in another fine performance for Grambling. Actually got more SWAC football coming away on Fox in a couple of weeks. When we go to Lorman, Mississippi and all court State playing Texas Southern. Flags coming in and they put kick it out of bounds. So with a minute remaining. We have a kick out of bounds. The ball would place 30 yards from the kicking spot. First down. So Prairie View will have it. We'll see where the final mark is. We'll take a look at that Prairie View sideline that really tells the story, Mark. Dejection as they had to feel in the first half that they were at least competitive with Grambling. They really only had themselves to blame in the second half as the game started to get away from them, especially later in the third quarter, early in the fourth. They made a couple of nice surges, but Grambling just answered every punch with another counterpunch of a stronger magnitude. You could call it growing pains because that's what they're going through right now. They, you saw some life out of this program tonight, but that lets you know where you got to get. On the ground. Coming back this way on the turn with the football is Fontenot. Fontenot works his way near the 45. And he draws a crowd from Grambling there. Close to the first down marker. Coach Frazier talked about 
getting over losses quickly. He'll have to evaluate what went wrong against Grambling, regroup. He had an extra week to, of preparation this week that he felt very good about. But he's got to make some corrections in that running game especially. Fontenot, a bright spot for Prairie View, but they've got to have some help for Fontenot to even set him up to be able to use, utilize him fully. On the ground, they fake it to Fontenot this time. Here comes Gibson, left side. Gibson at the 40. Gibson tripped up and finally slips down near the 30-yard line. Down inside the 30. So Gibson runs it for the Prairie View first down with 22 seconds remaining. Wouldn't be surprised to see Gibson take one final shot into the end zone here. Gibson showing the running ability that his coach, Henry Frazier, loves about him. Makes a nice little inside step and picks up sizable yardage all the way to the Grambling 30. Bobbled it at the end of that play, but it's first and 10. Gibson with the snap, doing as you indicate, taking a shot for the end zone. Got a man there at the right side. Touchdown. Panthers of Prairie View a and You found Greg Chapman left side of the end zone for the touchdown. Chapman's working against the Michael Dizer cornerback, turned and made excellent over-the-head catch in the corner of the end zone. So Prairie View playing it right to the very end. They go up top, and they get another score. Chapman this time with the touchdown grab with two seconds remaining in the football game. If anything, Prairie View has discovered this evening is a passing game as they've had success against Grambling. And rightfully so, they'll go for two. Gibson with the snap. Gives it right side and running it in for the two-point conversion. Was Arnell Fontenot. So it's 53 to 30 now. Well, looks 32 lot, after the two-point conversion. Looks a lot better than 65 to 7. Fontenot with the two-point conversion. And here comes the touchdown pass. Gibson with a nice, nicely thrown football. And Chapman behind the defensive coverage. Chapman almost casual on that reception. Turned, put his hands up very relaxed, just made the pick. Touchdown. So Chapman, the freshman from Carson, California, transferred into the program from Colorado State. And that's his first touchdown grab of the season. You got one, baby? Nothing better than making that on, touchdown baby. reception, even though it's at the Top end of the California, game. You get to turn the crowd. So with two seconds left, Grambling will win the State Fair Classic for this year. But the positive side for Prairie View is you did, a, did see a program that's definitely on its way up, starting to do some things right. Baby steps. Not big steps, baby steps. Hernandez will kick. We'll probably see an onside kick here. Grambling lining up for it. And Hernandez squares it, kicks it, it's loose on the surface, but Grambling corrals it near midfield, and that'll do it. Grambling wins it 53-32 as Coach Spears sprints across the sideline to congratulate Coach Frazier and Prairie View as the players meet near midfield, tying it up just a bit, but Grambling wins it 53-32 over Prairie View. Once again, the final score here from the State Fair Classic in Dallas, Texas. Grambling wins at 53-32 over the Panthers of Prairie View a and as you take a look at some of the highlights from the ball game. As we could say goodbye from the Cotton Bowl, Charles Ward for cover analyst Mark Lasseter saying thanks so much for joining us for the College Football Saturday on Fox.